Hey guys. <clears throat> what, as we in the business say, is up? And now, Samurai is gone. Bye, Samurai. I'm even downloading OpenOffice just for you, man. Because <laughs> I actually don't have it right now. The Falcon 3. And Dragoon is leaving. Farewell, Dragoon. <sighs> wow, psychotic. That sounds pretty psychotic. So I gotta ask you guys something. <clears throat> I, uh... Long story short, actually, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later, Sam. Remind me to tell you about the office thing later. Because, yeah, there's a reason for it. It's not like I just am obstinate about it or whatever. Oh my god, it's... It's Captain Hook! Actually, this is a, uh, this is probably one of my favorite Star Fox missions, right up there with the Agrabah ones, and of course the final ones, the battle, the battleship ones. I'm sorry, I really like the battleship, uh, uh, Star Fox missions, quite a bit, actually. Yes, I did, Skythe. Although, on honestly, I, I, as soon as I thought about it for a second, it's like, you know what, no, this, I've got an answer for this immediately. <laughs> FF8 is the game that most needs that kind of polish to its story and writing. So, yeah. Damn it. Oh, it's just a massive, heartless ship, that's all. But no, seriously, I don't think this has anything to do with Captain Hook. Oh god, so this is the, this is like one of the only Falcons I don't like because it's actually I, I don't know if you can tell, but I can't actually shoot in front of me. Of all the directions I can shoot, and I can shoot in a lot of directions. Wow, uh, I cannot actually shoot directly in front of myself. I can shoot in like a triangle in front of me. Ah, and everything next next to me gets shot at. That's about it. Oh my god, these freaking cannons. So this is actually making it kind of hard to focus fire on the cannons here, so I don't get killed. And a bit. Maybe I need to finally actually make my own ship. What do you guys think? Should I bother to just make a ship really quick? <sighs> yeah, the data battle scythe are uh, a little... Uh... Interesting. Okay, so let's... Uh, what have I got right now? What can I do? Yeah, that's great. Okay, let's uh, make something really, really basic here. Because I don't need, I don't think I have, like, crap for usefulness, which I really don't, apparently. Yeah, I... Oh, I have a Gravira. One Gravira. Okay, so... I've got five blizzards. Hi, Cougar. Alright, let's do this. Um, also, I think I mentioned it yesterday, but the interface for this is just a lot more intuitive for me. Which is good, because it doesn't really... Uh, give you that much in the way of directions uh, on the thing. Oh yeah, there's also the complexity meter, uh, which limits what you can make. Fortunately, that gets uh, raised later on. Let's see. Let's go ahead and then do... We're not going for style this time around, because I'm just trying to make a quick and dirty ship to get through the missions, so, uh... Yeah, our ship is going to look like a bunch of guns. <laughs> I 
I'm... I always hesitate about, uh... Reading, uh, stories like that, uh, Baronessa, so... I've, I have looked at it, but I have not actually, uh... Commented, obviously. That's right, I am making the Defiant in Kingdom Hearts terms. Now we do need one other thing, which is going to be here. Fun fact, you're not actually limited on how many uh, cockpits you can put in. But that's only relevant for certain uh, other things. Hey, Cougar. Oh, did I say hey? I don't remember. Hi, Shadow. <laughs> kind of out of it. Only woke up like 40 minutes ago. Um, we should probably have at least some health. Just some. Uh, let's see. What color should our final ship be? Well, this isn't our final ship, so let's just make it violet. What do you guys think? just for flavor. There we go. And actually, let's do these, too. Hey, Takoita. No, I didn't mean to do that. Ah, whatever. We'll do that. Okay, we're done. Hang on, we need to save first. There we go. We will call this the... Uh... I guess that's a good point, Vernessa. I will make a point to try and do that at some point in the future. Probably not until after the lower run is done, though. How's that sound? Lord knows that you're not the only person who's been posting stories on the, on the forum. And nobody's been commenting. <gasps> you don't, Takoida! Banish him! Yeah, no idea. Ah! God damn it. I forgot, we actually have to make a teeny ship, too. This is going to be really simple. Because all we're going to do here is uh, add weapons, uh, which I specifically left some blizzards for. Do I have enough for two of these? I do not. <clears throat> so, um...
And that's our tiny ship for now. A single gun. Uh, fill me with the... Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, we'll call our initial ship... Our initial teeny ship. Okay, so. I should have done the underside, but whatever. Doesn't matter that much. Hopefully this will work a little bit better. We've got a little bit more firepower on our side this time. Although our ability to dodge attacks has not exactly gotten any better. My god! Ah! My nose itches. Ah, okay. Hey, Perry. Never watch out, you're not the boss of me. Die. Uh. There we go. I had to line up for the frickin' cannons up there. Ah. Fine. Only if you need that kind of response, uh, response time, Cougar 12, don't forget. Not everyone needs super amazing FPS and, and, and frame rate and all that fun stuff. There's nothing wrong with wanting it, but it doesn't mean you need it. Oh my god! Hey, I got a rank! Now that you can kind of tell the difference now that I have some real firepower on my back. Oh god! Enemies everywhere! Enemies everywhere! Oh, whoops, I didn't even see that guy. Come on. A little bit more. And berserk mode! Berserk mode! Die, Captain Hook's ship, die! Continue to die! And snapped it in half.
They also added this thing uh, called uh, gummy mi uh, EX missions, which I need to sneeze again. Oh my gosh. Oh, absolutely, Titans. That's that's definitely what we're doing. And that's something totally unrelated to that. Look at that invincible. Yeah, yeah. So the firepower of the Falcon level 3 is 305. The firepower of our ship is actually 290, but we actually have negative speed. But, uh... Yeah, despite the fact that it's like, oh, the Falcon's better anyway, I think, I think we're good at this. Although it just occurred to me. Uh, we haven't set up any abilities, have we? Let's do that really quick. Oh, excuse me. I don't blame you, Big Mama Frank. So yeah, abilities are things you can do. We have uh, 8 AP to work with. Um, honestly, we're just going to turn on that and that for now. There we go. Yeah, negative speed is actually more useful in these missions than it was uh, back in uh, the first game. In the first game, you wanted as fast as possible so you could blaze through the missions as quickly as possible. And here, at least if you care about actually getting score and medals and whatnot, it's actually better to be slower for the most part. So EX missions. Uh, EX missions are basically you get a, you have a unique requirement. Like in this mission, you have to have at least an aerial rating of this, or you have to have this many cockpits on, or whatever. Cockpits, excuse me. You need... In other words, it's a, uh, fulfill this requirement, and then go perform the mission. You can't even start the mission unless you fulfill the requirement. Yeah, what did you just call me, Donald? Die! Kingdom Twitch shall consume you! So true. Yeah, we'll talk about that one when we get there, Psychotic. Holy crap. I've decided I want to make an attempt at, at most of the Dreadnought missions, but I've also decided not to promise to actually succeed at any of those attempts. Because, yeah. Oh, he said go gummy! Oh, okay, I thought he said go dummy. Which is what I heard, because it's Donald and he's kind of an ass. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but Donald equals ass. When you think of an ass... No, I'm kidding. Um... Ah! I like being cannoned into, into oblivion. It's one of my favorite things to have happen to me. Actually, I have Big Mama Frank. And, and I know this is going to sound blasphemous, but I actually like Star Fox Adventures. It's got some serious flaws to it, uh, but it was fun, and I've actually played through it twice, which is more than I can say for a lot of games. Yay, my first neon bar. Whoops. What's it even looking? Ah! I should probably look at the screen for a bit, huh? Yeah, I don't think we get Magnet until a decent amount later. That's probably the only thing I don't like about the gummy missions, and I know that sounds really weird, but... You pretty much have to be at the end of the game in order to really have all the fun, cool stuff for the gummy, gummy missions. To really be able to set up, um, you know, whatever you want uh, as far as your ship goes. Oh my god! Cannons! Cannon to the left of them! Cannon to the right of them! Cannon in front of them! Beat the crap out of them! Oh my god! Ah, whatever. Oh my god, there's another one. Get him! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Oh, right, I'm out of life now. Yeah! Baby! I don't know, it felt like a competent Zelda uh, clone, basically. Star Fox Adventures. Yeah, not great, not on the level of most actual Zelda games, but still fun. Oh, 
And there's S rank. She's going down, buddy. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, 420, or excuse me, green. I hate to point this out, but Star Fox Adventures doesn't have any shooting in it other than the one section. So, uh. What, Tron, Dakota? Hey, Zeiss. Yes, right. Now, the S rank is usually the special models, which I usually don't actually give a damn about, to be completely honest with you. But I still go for the highest rank possible because there's lots of other stuff I want. I guess there were the connection missions. I guess those count. <laughs> I barely remember that those existed. Uh, then you're probably thinking of a uh, reboot, Dakota, would be my next guess. Alright, time to go meet James Woods. I mean, Hades. I knew it! Everyone go kill Green for having a dissenting opinion. Oh god, it's the Rock Titan, but it's okay, because we know he's pathetic, so, you know. I mean, look at this. He's been downgraded. He's like he's like a mini-boss now. He's not even a real boss. Listen to that crowd! That is completely invisible! <laughs> Seriously, they had the cheering and nobody in the stands. It's just the same, they do the exact same thing in Birth by Sleep. It is freaking eerie at times. Meanwhile, we end up down here. Huh? Are you sure this is the Coliseum? It's that wrong. Oh, <laughs> guess we were a little off. No, Megara! Heartless! Hey, Mechanical. Uh, so, she was under attack a second ago, right? Right? Ah, who cares. Uh, didn't I have something I wanted to do here? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I actually have a uh, cure now. <coughs> ah. So, yeah, that's going there. There's something else, too. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, so I want that. And that. See you around, Green. There we go. Just getting rid of the news here. Although, while we're on the subject, I should probably go ahead and do this. AP boost. Does anyone use any of these on anyone than Sora? I'm just curious. On a normal playthrough, not a min-max playthrough. Because I know after a certain point that you don't actually need them anymore because he'll max out. Uh, let's see. I don't think I actually have anything else I can... Give it to him, really. Hey, Tabito. Thanks, but I'm fine. And you're supposed to be? I'm Sora. He's Donald. Sora Donald Goofy. We came to see how Hercules is doing. Where's the... Oh, there it is. It's right here. You know Wonder Boy? Yeah, plus we're heroes too. <laughs> you mean junior heroes, Donald? <laughs> Looks like we have a friend in common. Name's Megara. My friends call me Meg. Well, I'm not your friend, so... Hi, Megara. You know, I know, I know, Megara, Greek mythology, yada yada yada. Nowadays, whenever I hear the name Megara, I just cannot help but think of that frickin' super, lots of different 
Head's uh, boss in uh, Throne of Thunder. It's like all I can think of when I think of that now. I, oh, by the way, that's a Gorsh counter, because Goofy just picked up on the fact that Megara and Hercules were an item, even though she didn't actually say it. Yeah, the Hydra boss. I really like the music in the uh, Underworld, too. It's uh, among my favorite world songs in Kingdom Hearts, uh, too, specifically. Right, I still don't have Wisdom form. Had a warlock? <laughs> yeah. Funny enough, the three classes I used to do that fight on were warlock, hunter, and, and warrior, so. Hey, Demix! Uh, bye, Demix. Yeah. Hmm. Well, whatever. You know, I should have mentioned that before. So, they actually changed the, uh. The, uh thing in the lower left there based on the world you're in. Also, notice the chains that are around the drive in the lower right, indicating that we can't use it while we're here. No, I haven't. Guys, I've been pre-approved for a payday loan. <laughs> Anyways, um... But one of the things I like about this is this is a weird form of gameplay and story integration. Uh, we're supposed to be weaker while in the underworld because of that anti-hero's shield that's around the place, right? First of all, that's great because it doesn't affect Auron. Because he's not a hero. So, you know. Um, second of all, though, obviously, you know, they wanted to show that in some gameplay format. But they didn't want to make it too bad, and I like this. They could have nerfed the hell out of you. They could have made you, know, you, just, you move slowly, or you don't actually have mana or you you, know, you can't heal or something. They could have done a lot of things to make this session much, much more irritating. Uh, and instead, they just got rid of your drive bar. So we have the little indicator there that, yes, you're weakened, but it doesn't really affect much uh, unless you've been really heavily relying on your drives at this point in time. So in my opinion, that's a nice balance between, uh, you know, it, trying to service the story and the plot um, and at the same time uh, not pissing off the player. Uh, Shadow, it means it's a scam. That's literally the truth. I wish I could go into Valor a couple times here, but mostly just for leveling it, not actually for using it. But we've already talked about that. Demix! Okay. So I like that scene a lot. First of all, as weird as this sounds, that's one of the reasons why Demix is a useful member of the organization. Oh, hey! Check it out, it's a silhouette. An absent silhouette, aka this is where Zexion... This is what's left of Zexion. Uh, I'll talk about these silhouettes in just a second, but the reason I like that Demix scene is, first of all, um, it's funny. I mean, oh my god! Uh, but second of all, and honestly more importantly, it showcases why someone like him is valuable to the organization. Any of the other organization members probably could have come in here and just battled their way through, but that's loud and noisy and, and obnoxious, and... Every now and again you do need someone who's willing, who's capable of slipping in, stealing something, and slipping out. And I like that. I like the fact that he is effectively capable of... I mean, let's not, let's not diminish his accomplishment here. He just stole something from Hades. Without issue. In, in effectively minutes yeah, and he's out and that is not exactly an insignificant accomplishment and he got away with it too <laughs> ah, excuse me 
Now, while other per uh, members of the organization probably could do that, his ability to uh, infiltrate like that is not exactly an uh, a non-valuable ability. Out? Jeez Louise. Oh, they're nothing but trouble, the whole lot of them. So, uh, what are you gonna do about Hercules? He's made mincemeat out of every fighter you sent at him. <laughs> Pretty soon, the underworld's gonna be standing room only. See? Why don't you just pick somebody already dead and save him the trouble? <laughs> no music. That... That is good. And I know just the warrior. I'm scared too, Donald. <coughs> hmm. Hades, come out! I love this, by the way. In case you've missed the plot point, we're here to talk to Hades because Hades is being a dick to Hercules. On Megara's behalf. So, in other words, we're trying to reason with Hades. I mean... <laughs> That's actually why we're here, legitimately. We're not here to fight. We're not here to be like, oh, we must destroy your heartless. No, we're just here to talk. Sora. Sora is here just to talk. Because, you know. Oop, I thought he was dead. Well, it's not like he has that much say in it, Takoda. Try to keep in mind he is not in any sense that you could actually use the word in a real god. He's just a significantly powerful being who happens to have a couple of tricks up his sleeves. Well, in fairness, it wasn't Sora's idea. This is another good example, by the way, of something I've been talking about several times. Uh, the idea that someone is more limited uh, if they leave their given world. The flip side of that, and this is something that is worth noting as well, is in their given world, they're actually much stronger. This is actually something that's covered in uh, 358 as well. Uh, during some of the missions, especially early on, they emphasize to Roxas that he has to be careful in some worlds because he's he is, for all intents and purposes, on their turf. And, and a lot of beings, especially in the Disneyverse, are much stronger or more skilled or more capable or whatever on their own, you know, on their own territory. Uh, and Hades is no exception to that. This place being probably the most literal ex uh, example of that, where we are literally weakened simply by being here. Now, granted, that's specifically the Underworld. But the point is, this kind of power wouldn't affect us anywhere else. And Hades himself has a significant amount of ability to do whatever he feels like. Yeah, exactly. Hades is basically invincible while he's here. By the by, uh, what's down there? Just the underworld's deepest dungeon. <laughs> this time I'm bringing out the mother of all bad guys. I do find it interesting that uh, Orin is equated okay. to being a bad guy. <coughs> mm. Well, maybe I should go. I gotta be honest, I fangasmed so hard when I first saw this. I really did. <laughs> Same voice actor, by the way. Let's cut to the chase. Here's the deal I'm gonna offer you. I let you out of the slammer. No strings. You'll be free as a bird. I like Pete's reaction to Oren. And all for one little job. Fight Hercules in the Colosseum to the death. This is my story. And you're not part of it. Did Any... you forget who you're talking to? I am the Lord of the Dead! <laughs> no wonder no one wants to die. You are fired! <laughs> I love it. I also love how Oren is one-handing a two-handed weapon and holding up against Hades with it. 
It really helps to emphasize how strong Oren is, even in lore. As well he should be. Because it's Oren. Get up! Oren is probably the closest one to the original of the various FF cameos. Most of them basically have no real parallels to their original. Uh, other than a few vague uh, concepts. Oren is basically straight out of FF10, by contrast. In fact, it's been emphasized, uh, or at least hinted, excuse me, hinted. I keep saying emphasized instead of hinted. It's been hinted that Oren is actually uh, the Oren from FF10. And he died, and he came here, and yeah. What was that? I love that. Can't fight him here. We have to go. Now. I also like how Oren immediately figures out that they, you know, need to, to, to be careful and not, you know, be here, fight him here. Uh, and, and Sora's like, but I gotta talk to Hades. So I think that deserves uh, one more Sora's dumb. It's like, Hades, we want to talk. Ugh, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> ah, excuse me. Oh my god. <clears throat> I love this, by the way. This is this is indicative of why Hades is much stronger in his realm than anywhere else. And why we have to actually take him seriously here. Ah, ah, we did it. We closed the door. We're away. Leaving so soon? Hi. You know, it could be psychotic. Oh my god. Alright, oh, I gotta actually feel the heat. <laughs> Hashtag feel the heat. As usual. Oh my god. See, Hades is actually invincible here, but there's plenty of Heartless to kill on the way. Uh, this is an interesting variant on the fleeing uh, quest type, and I actually rather like this particular little section here. Because the music is just silly enough to emphasize that this isn't really a serious moment, and that's good, because it shouldn't be. Hades, this Hades, should not be a serious character. He should be James Woods. Awesome, but not serious. So, yeah, this, this is pretty much just perfect, the way they did this, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly, psychotic. Although I imagine some of my viewers wouldn't get that. Damn it, I still don't have wisdom for him. <laughs> I keep trying to dash. So there's a decent amount of cool factors that Orin brings to the party. Which I have to admit I rather like. I missed the large body. I also love the implication that Oren is unaffected by the zero to hero to zero field, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, that is in the underworld. Because, I mean, again, not really a hero. Feel the heat. I think they got rid of the Jugaboos because You're Kingdom really Hearts. Good. Are you some kind of hero? Sora's dumb. No, I'm no hero. I'm just an. Huh? Oren. Whoa. My name. I'm Sora. Go Wow. Hi. It seems we were fated to meet. Maybe you need a guardian. Uh, guardian? Thanks, but no thanks. Hmm. Actually, I'm pretty sure... Uh, I've actually heard this speculated sometime, what he was going to say there. I'm just un. And that's the interesting thing, because he says un. So in other words, whatever he's going to say next started with a vowel in English grammar. So 
the thing that com occurs to me immediately that he was probably going to say there is unsent. I am just an unsent, or, you know, undead, or however you want to think of that. Uh, for all intents and purposes, yes, Sora is in hell. Just Greek hell, which is, which is different, let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. Hmm. I got Heartless all over the underworld now, so you can leave those pipsqueaks to me. <laughs> Look, pal, you just keep working on turning Hercules into a Heartless, then he'll be all mine. I am nowhere near... This is my underworld, you idiot! ...have a level to take on Zixion. I'll handle this myself! Sorry. Cerberus, go! Ah, uh, yes. So, how many of you know about the Mickey thing in this game? I'm sure most of you do. I'll just talk about it. For those of you who don't know, for those of you who watch this for the first time, uh, there are, I think, like ten or so. Maybe there's seven. There's a decent number of fights in the game where if you die, uh, you have a chance, a pretty high chance, to have Mickey show up instead of you just game over. And when Mickey shows up, you actually play as Mickey, and it's awesome. Um, one of those fights is the Cerberus fight we're about to be doing. I know this personally, regardless of having actually looked up the table, because the very first time I actually had Mickey show up ever while playing this game for the first time was on the upcoming Cerberus fight. And I, I'm curious how many of the rest of you uh, had a similar experience. There's a weird loading time thing. Basically, yes, Titans. That is actually what they're after. They're sending wave after wave after wave of enemies after Hercules, so he's going to uh, lose the, lose his will, lose his strength, uh, lose his ability to stay himself. Did I just get that puzzle piece? Well, wow! I wasn't even trying for that. Anyways, um, and then they'll turn him into a Heartless and... <laughs> Really, Samurai? I didn't know the door, uh, off the top of my head, I didn't know the door could be one of those. Now, there's one other level, uh, boss that I tend to get Mickey on fairly frequently, if I'm being 100% honest with myself. I'm sure you guys can guess exactly what that boss is. I didn't mean to do that. Whatever. Die, large buddy! That is correct, Deutsch. Zaldin. I have seen Mickey so many times on Zaldin. Frickin' Zaldin. Zaldin. I don't think I've actually played that game, uh, Dakota. No, Zaldin is not an easy fight. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure there's a couple fights where the Mickey chance is really, really high. And I'm pretty sure Zaldin is one of those. God, large bodies are such an irritant in every game they're in. Your pain shall be twofold. Zaldin starts at 200%. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get Mickey during any of the optionals, if I'm not mistaken. You get Data Zaldin. That's not the Zal the Data battle I am most worried about, but holy crap. Would anyone like to guess the very first Data battle I ever saw? Just... I will say that the ba first Data battle I saw put g gave me a very strong impression of the Data battles. <sighs> will that open it? Yeah, I think so. Actually, this doesn't really qualify as no music. There's decent sound effects for that one. It was not Roxas, no. 
It was someone who, like I said, left a strong impression on me. Which one am I dreading the most? Marluxia. I'm not good at dodging. <laughs> and Demnus. And... Hell, honestly. I don't think there's any data battle I'm not dreading. No, the first data battle I ever saw was Larkscene. Which, uh, after her fight in Chain of Memories, I was just like, Whoa! Um, whoa, that was unique. What, Samurai? Blocking is for cowards. Actually, I'm really, really good at dodging in uh, Birth by Sleep. I usually deliberately don't dodge in this game because it's actually a tactic you can do, and I'm sure you know about this, uh, that involves trying to keep the offensive power going. In other words... Well, I was going to demonstrate it there, but if he, if Cerberus hits me, I can counterattack him and get it immediately right back into my combos. Yeah. Or I could dodge and have to waste a few precious seconds. In other words, my point is, you know, when I'm actually trying at this game, and I have done that because I love this game, and I actually felt like I was really good at this game once upon a time. Uh, uh, I, uh... I deliberately, it was a deliberate tactical choice not to dodge, so that I could be more offensive, so I could bring an enemy uh, down quicker. Come on, Come on Orin. Really? Don't taunt the giant three-headed dog, Sora. You know what would have been funny? We get through the door. Ah, we're safe. And then Cerberus is just prying the door open. Come on, Wonder Boy. Play hooky for a day. For old time's sake. They came to see me. They came to see a hero. I can't let them down. <sighs> Don't worry, Meg. I'll be fine. What does a hero need rest for, huh? <laughs> I like how his muscles actually expand there. It's a nice touch. Listen to that crowd! Man, they're totally existent. Sora, don't let me down. Yeah, we sort of completely failed you, Megara. Sorry. Well, Shadow. When a young woman who has a massive chest and a very thin waist loves a man who has a massive chest and a very thin waist. Seriously, they both have the same problem, it's just expressed differently. Anyways. The idea to quote it is Hercules has been going non-stop for some time because that's pretty much what Hades' plan has been. Oh, by the way, as an aside, I like the fact, once again, that we are not repeating the movie here. In fact, we never are. In any of the uh, Hercules sections, we're never repeating the movie. It's probably one of the reasons, one of the two big reasons why they tend to be some of my favorite uh, sections. The second big reason, of course, being James Woods. And the third reason, which isn't as big but still as relevant, is Zack. I'm sorry, but Zack was pretty awesome in Birth by Sleep. Actually, he only really expresses that once uh, in the games, Dakota. In this game, actually. But regardless, no. Even the deity shtick actually uh, gets, allows them to grow tired in the Hercules canon. Let me see if I've got this right. That brat's keyblade works on any lock. That's right! <laughs> have I ever told you about the killer coliseum we have right here in the underworld? So this is great. It makes the one upstairs look like an Olympic kiddie pool. Then that's the place we're gonna put an end to Herc the Jerk's winning streak. Herc the Jerk! Problem. Zeus locked it tight. Oh. <laughs> oh? That's right. Bingo. Pete is smarter than All Sora. Is swipe that key and then reopen the underdrome. Not that it takes much. 
Hate to tell you, but that key is kind of particular. It won't work for just anybody, and that kid ain't no pushover. <laughs> you know, Hades would you probably know that more than touch? more than uh, Pete would. So, one thing I like about this, this is Hades' big plan. I mean, yes, he wants to take down Hercules, but his big plan is, I'm going to have a bigger and better Colosseum than the one up top. That, that, that's his plan. That's his goal. And I love that, because not only is that much more mundane than most of the I will conquer everything plans or I will kill everything plans, but it actually makes a lot of sense, because that would be a good way for Hades to show that he is better than those jerks up on Olympus. Because they've got their big Olympus Colosseum, but I've got the Underdrome, and look at how awesome it is. Don't worry, Megara, you're just doomed. Yeah, exactly, Regal. Screw those bastards. Overall, I actually like the Hades Cup stuff better. With one exception. The fact that you don't get freaking exp from going through it. That irritates the snot out of me. I really wish you would gain exp in the Coliseum. It makes it so that I almost never do it. And on replays. Because there's basically no point to other than, uh, you know, completion's sake. By the way, I like the uh, fact that we've still got the uh, the standings from the previous game here. That's just a nice touch there. Arrogance, Titans. <sighs> Sora, Donald, Goofy, when do you get here? Hey, Herc. Hey, I'll be there. You on another adventure? Yeah, tracking down some friends, wiping out some heartless. Super casual. Your heroes you know. always busy. You know it. Ah. Damn it. That was in Days Samurai, I think. I'll go check in a minute. That's exactly what we need, is freaking training. I just, I love training under Phil. That's, that's the greatest thing ever. Before we go train, let's go check that out really quick. Because I'm pretty sure these are going to be destroyed soon. On the Hydra's back, so yeah, let's go check that really quick. <clears throat> the ranking in which you battled valiantly, in which you were the victor, and yeah, the memorable. Which you struggled greatly. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the one we're both thinking of, Samurai, is 358. Since, you know, when... <laughs> Yeah. Because nobody remembered Sora because the unchained memory thing, so that actually makes sense. Alright, guys, it's time to be trained in taking out pottery! See, Phil is actually secretly Link's uh, trainer, so. Hey, champ! How you feeling? Better rest up for tomorrow's match. Nobody's gonna pay to see a worn out hero. Gabish? Remember what I told you. Victory in the games comes down to two simple words. Eat, bathe, sleep. Ew. <laughs> huh? <laughs> hey, if it ain't the junior heroes. He's actually Look excited to see us. How weird. Better. How you guys been? Have you earned your true hero wings yet? Well, we did save the entire realm of light. You ain't got what it takes. Right. So, what's up? Some people theorize that Phil, thanks to his nature, actually can tell when someone has the potential to be a real Keyblade Master. Do note the way I say that. We've already talked about the, the fact that there's basically two types of Keyblade Masters, at least in my opinion. There's the political ones, which is basically just a title, 
and there's the ones who actually have you know some some greater potential or skill or mastery over uh, over their keyblades or keyblades in general, and therefore can become considered a master. Oh my god! Um, so, anyways, the point being. Uh, because of Phil's nature, and because of the nature of Hercules' world, the, the idea being that he can actually be like, well, you're not actually a Keyblade Master. He doesn't know that, of course, because he has no context for his information. So he just calls them not heroes. Even though they, let's be honest with ourselves, are. Hey, Zira. And yeah, they fiddled with his uh, model a bit here. All right, time for training. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we'll talk about the mark of mastery when we get to uh, birth by sleep and dream drop distance. Wow, that's just not doing anything. Oh my god, pick them up, Sora. Butterfingers. Uh, let's see, you missed Hades being awesome, Oren being awesome, and Demix being awesome. I gotta be honest, while I'm not a fan of the training missions, the ones in one pissed me off way more. You guys saw, I actually had to retry the barrel one twice because of that garbage. Back in the day, I had to retry that closer to like ten times, you know, when I first started playing Kingdom Hearts 1. Just, oh my god. Seriously? Interrupting the training, Sora. Shut your filthy mouth. God, Sora. Nobody loves you. Your own parents don't love you. If they did, they might give enough of a damn to actually try to look at, look for you. Of course, we're going to find out that Sora has no parents. Seriously, you watch. I know what you're saying, but his mother... Or was it? Secretly, it was actually just Kairi's adoptive mother. Sora never had a mother. Or a father. Or friends. In fact, Sora never existed! And all of a sudden we're at the very first game. Uh, like the very first scene in the first game. And, uh, and we're playing as Riku instead. Because Sora doesn't exist. <laughs> it's only over a year old, Lord of the Flame. No, 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 psychotic. Xehanort is Sora's child. The Olympus Stone has been stolen by Demix! Hercules is sad. Oh, you're on this? Feeling under the weather? You know, I thought staying in perfect shape was part of the hero job description. You know what I'm saying. Oh, right. Hades, we gotta talk. Ah. I came to share a bit of ah. mildly interesting news. Seems your dear, sweet little nutmeg went and got herself lost in the underworld. 
You mean you kidnapped her? Well, maybe. <laughs> but why get caught up in the details? Uh -uh -uh. You can't leave now. Okay. You've got a very important match today against uh, the bloodthirsty Hydra. <laughs> I mean, if you don't stick around, who knows what kind of accidents might happen. Yeah, accidents you cause. Like I said, details. Who needs them? You're just a coward. Ah, well, can't all be heroes. <laughs> Can you handle this? Well, yeah. Oh, it. We have heroes. Junior heroes, Donald. You take care of the Hydra. We'll handle the rest. <gasps> I like Donald's Tell glare. You gotta find Meg. Okay, this... I wasn't gonna give this a no music, because the earlier scene was fine, but that last part of the thing... Yeah, no, that's a no music. So, um... I, I just gotta share something that's totally unrelated to Kingdom Hearts, guys. Uh, who out there thinks that Square Enix is a stupid company? Uh, other than me, obviously. Squirrel for brains and all that. Yeah, how's our charge level? Okay, we're good. Ah, there we go. I'm seeing a couple people saying yes here, which, you know, I, I mean, that's a, there's a degree of sense make there. Phil! <laughs> I'd say hi to Leander, but, you know. So anyways, the reason I ask this is I saw something that I just found very amusing. <clears throat> Yuichi Wada, who's an idiot, uh, has given his opinion on how Konami has been allegedly behaving towards Hideo Kojima. With the latest, blah, 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 blah. As uh, I know Mr. Kojima, I want to say I can't believe this cruel treatment, but here I'm going to give my thoughts as a corporate executive. However you think about this, this is a negative for business. Maybe leaving the home uh, console market is managed as plan, but going out of the way to make enemies with the world has no meaning. Generally, this kind of thing happens when there's a lack of leadership. I think perhaps there isn't someone in charge who is paying attention and laying out details for the whole enterprise. Wada added, it seemed like the problem is a lack of direction. When you're not aware that the feeling of your own department aren't allied with the world at whole, the results can be deplorable. This is Yuichi Wada calling out Konami. Yuichi freaking Wada, the idiot who actually wanted three concurrent MMOs simultaneously, among many, many other very stupid decisions that he personally was, was behind. And he's calling out Konami. Just thought I'd share that. Yeah, seriously, Regal. Uh... My god, it's the Hydra! With only one head! Oh, well, I'm sure that'll be a no, no if non issue. Yay! We defeated the Hydra. We didn't chop off his head for some reason. Listen to this, by the way, listen to this. They're not just cheering, they're cheering his name. There's no one in the stands! Look! Look! There's no one there! And they're cheering his name! Oh my god, that's just crazy! God, that drives me... Ah, it's ah, it's almost creepy! Right, right, I remember this. Oh, I, 
<laughs> Couldn't find the edge. Oh my god. Just, yeah. Ah, damn it. Hang on. I, I absolutely can fault them. As I've already discussed, there are other ways they could have made that happen. And they have in other scenes in this very game. It is more than possible to actually do something with that. But they're like, no, 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 no. <sighs> Whatever. Anyways. Um, so, uh, getting back to the point at hand. Uh, you'll notice I don't actually have a lot lore-wise to share for a lot of these early worlds. It's because there really isn't much to share for most of these early worlds. It's like, okay, I can discuss, you know the nature of, of how the worlds interact with each other on a small level scale. I could talk about how the Nobodies have been planting the seeds for these events to happen for years. I could talk about their overarching plan. That's really all I've got, you know. There's not much else to share here. Yes, Tingle is clearly the most powerful member in the Zillion universe. I could talk about the fact that the, uh, the Underworld curse does affect... Sora, Donald, and Goofy. It doesn't affect Oren, but it does affect those three. So obviously, by the definitions of the metaphysical rules that exist on the Underworld, uh, the three of them do qualify as heroes. Which I find interesting in its own right, since, you know... Well, we've already discussed why I find that interesting. But, in the interest of total fairness, uh, but all three of these people have been more than capable and willing to actually stand up and do things that other people probably wouldn't even dream of doing. You know, basically just to help, for with no real thought of reward, so... I don't know about you guys, but that does actually qualify them as heroes in my mind. And it's actually been a, kind of an irritant for me for some time, uh, until I thought about it and came to the conclusion I already gave you guys, that they are constantly called, you know, non-heroes or junior heroes, when, to be blunt, in my opinion, Sora, Donald, and Goofy are actually larger and better heroes than Hercules or, like, half the other characters in the series, really. Actually, that's a good point, Dakota. It's a shame, because they could have gone with the Unsung Heroes uh, concept here. See Final Fantasy Tactics for one of my favorite examples of that idea. But, uh, shrug. Eh, I don't feel like getting that right now. I will not share my opinions on the Bleach manga. Whoops, wrong way. I really, 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 really do not like the Quincy arc at all. I suppose that's a valid point. Even though we do actually qualify as heroes in basically every way, um, they don't know that. They don't know that we saved the realm of light, not just, you know, any given individual world. Every now and again, yes, we were 12. And by every now and again, I mean I can think of three ever, but yes. Hey, Sledged. Ah, oh, it sucks, Sledge. I'm sorry. Damn it, I'm actually turned around. Holy crap. Well, considering the Olympus gods call us a hero in Kingdom Hearts 2, Phil better call us a hero in Kingdom Hearts 3. I mean, seriously. Phil, love you, buddy, but there is such a thing as being too critical. I don't really like anime Cougar 12, most of the time. 
like 99.9% .9 of the time. Ugh. That's why I usually go silent when the chat turns towards, uh... Demix! Huh? Oh, you! Wait a sec... Roxas? Excuse me? So, Roxas? okay, really quick. We've talked about the perception thing several times, and we'll see a lot of that actually in Kingdom Hearts 2. For example, uh, Riku can more or less change his appearance based solely on the blindfold. Uh, Ansem the Wise uses the power of darkness to change his appearance. Some people literally see someone else as something else. Uh, Shion is a good example of this. Uh, so, in other words... Not everyone sees the same thing when they look at someone, is what I'm trying to say. This is a truth in the Kingdom Hearts setting. So this has been a debate for some time. Do these characters literally see Roxas when they look at Sora? Or are they just messing with him? Because both of those are actually viable uh, options. Both of those are things that are valid. And uh, it's also worth noting that there's probably some uh, in-betweens. You know, there's probably some uh, uh, situations where someone can see them as they actually are or sees them as something else. For example, uh, and this is probably my favorite example, I'm pretty sure Zigbar actually sees Sora as Sora. However, it's probably uh, worth noting he definitely notices Roxas is in there. He even says Sora and Roxas, whereas most everyone else just refers to him as Roxas, including Zyx and Luxord and Demix here. Um, so, up to you. It's not other than Vision to quote it. It's more like... People and the connections between people uh, matter more than the light particles that are bouncing off them, is I think how I would phrase that. Again, the non-literal, non-physical, you know, non-conforming to standard physics kind of a setting. So, when you look at someone, you don't just see the light particles bouncing off of whatever is there. You see someone and their connections to you and how they function for you and blah, 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 blah. It's one of the reasons why uh, Zigbar sees Ventus when he looks at Shion. And Saix sees a puppet. And people who get close to her see uh, Shion. Uh, there's actually a really great scene in 358 where... Axel, Roxas, and Shion are all sitting next to each other, and the camera keeps switching basically viewpoints. So each time Ro it's Roxas looking at Shion, he sees Shion. And each time it's Axel looking at her, he sees the puppet. And then at a certain point in time, Ac they discuss whether or not they're actually friends, and Axel's like, yeah, okay, we can be friends, and they get closer. And then Axel looks over, and he sees Shion for the first time. Literally a kind of a switch like that. And unlike other switches where you're not aware of it, he's fully aware of the fact that her appearance changed, or more accurately, what he saw in her changed. So, anyway, so it's that kind of an idea. Maybe you're looking at them and seeing someone reflective of your own self. And let's be honest, most of these people worked with Roxas for about a year. Uh, Demix and Luxord were both rather regular pairings for Roxas. Um, and Zigbar, excuse me, Zigbar as well. Which, which, uh, of course I am, Cougar. Um... And furthermore, uh, these people are nobodies themselves. And remember, Roxas did not get smoothly merged back into Sora. What I mean by that is, it's still Sora and Roxas over there. Roxas is just basically sleeping within him for all intents and purposes. But Roxas is still a separate entity. He will not willingly remerge to recreate the original Sora until the end of the game. So Roxas is actually still standing there, just not cognizantly or con uh, consciously. Oh, it's no use. Huh? What are you talking about? Let's see here. I love this. If the subject fails to respond... Reads his orders. ...use aggression to liberate his true disposition. Right. Did they ever pick the wrong guy for this one? You're bizarre. Oh, he's gotta be the thief! Now that's just plain rude. <laughs> So this is the easy version of the fight. This is not the big fight that so many people had problems with back in the day. This is a joke. Yeah, that's a good way to put that, Raymond. And actually, yeah, Tequita, that is entirely uh, within the realm of fe uh, feasibility. Hey, Darkrai. Yes, uh, Demix was trying to get Roxas to emerge within Sora. 
And he was, as Demix puts out, definitely the wrong person to send for that. Ironically, the best person to send for that would probably have been Axel, who is no longer working for the organization. So, you know. Uh, yeah. A sitar, more specifically. Or sitar. Not bad, Roxas. He is basically the bard or dancer class with the water element. And he's stronger than he looks. Uh, Roxas, come back to us. Guys, a broken record. Hell, work! Damn it, Green. Told you not to spend too much money, except I didn't say that at all. But I'm gonna pretend I did. Hey, Schmeidolf. Mm, and hey, Nero's us. Yeah, this is the 2.5 version. Or, excuse me, the final mix for... Uh, the, the PS3 version of the song. Let's go. Meg needs our help. Eh. Meh. Holy crap, Demix is back all of a sudden! Aw, oh, don't be like that. Especially when I'm here to tell you about something even better than the Olympus Stone. Absent silhouettes. So yeah, some people interpret this in different ways. Basically, either the absent silhouettes are in lore, or the absent silhouettes are a purely gameplay uh, aspect. They strike me as a little bit more of a gameplay thing than anything else. However, it is possible for the absent silhouettes to actually be uh, a lore-relevant thing. In other words, if they specifically uh, put those absent silhouettes here, the organization did, for Sora to fight in, in the hopes that it would reawaken uh, either his real memories, uh, or excuse me, his, his lost memories from Chain of Memories, or, uh, or Roxas within him, that makes sense. But it's more likely that the absent silhouettes are purely a gameplay mechanic. Both are valid perspectives. I think uh, Sora unlocking this probably qualifies as a Sora's dumb moment. Not for the fact that he unlocks it and, and, and does exactly what Hades wants him to do. For the fact that he does it without question or hesitation. It's like, oh, here's a lock with an image of Megara on it. Clearly, I should unlock it. The actual command there, in case you didn't see it, was literally go to the rescue. No, Takoida. Uh, both, the answer really there is yes, Titans. Either one will work just fine for the organization's purposes. Sora is easily manipulatable, and Roxas could be controlled under the right circumstances, so. Yay, Meg's free? Mom! Almost there. Excuse me, Megara. Yeah, I think we're going to go with a Sora's Dumb for that. Just because, yay, here's a lock with Megara's image on it. Thinking about heroes don't need to think about things. Clearly. That's what I call a key. Gee, thanks for your help. Now have a nice day. Sora, behind you! <laughs> oh my god! It's the most terrifying villain ever! Better think again. Clearly, the true antagonist of the entire series is Pete. Help me. I will never help you, Megara. 
Never! If only because you won't shut up about helping you. Speaking from experience. Yeah, yeah, that! Shut up! Megara. Alright, now to kill Pete. Shut up, Megara! Oh my god! I like how his weapon is basically flinging bombs at you. Oh my god, Pete's invincible! Oh, he's not invincible. Okay, we're good. Actually, I like the idea that Me that Megara is standing there and Hades is like trying to make small talk. As if they were like normal people and Megara's just like, dude, screw off. And he's like, no, no seriously, so did you catch that latest uh, you know, match? That was, that was really nice. I will never help you. No, the musical will be in a bit. There's too many. There's four. You do know how to count, right, Sora? Four. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah, me too, Jango. Get out of here. I'll meet you back at the Coliseum. What about you? I'm gonna show these guys what happens when they mess with a true hero. Now, wait a sec. Cool. I will say I find it hilarious that Hercules cannot defeat Pete. I really do find that very funny. Sora, I won't leave him. You'll be okay. You just Look, did. Herc has his limits. He can't keep winning forever. Then we'll go back him up. Get Meg out of here. Why is... Pete is cheating, but I just find it hilarious. That Hercules, the great and powerful Hercules, cannot defeat... Pete. Valsin Ball Titans. I mean, look at Herc. He's like, oh man. This, ah, uh, these six. Oh my god, there's six Heartless now. Are just too much for me. Oh god, I'm too defeated. Oh god. Oh, Sora's here. I got this now. Sora empowers me. And then he picks up Sora and starts drinking him like Kool Aid. Or, uh, Gatorade, there we go. Gatorade, that's what I meant. Those thousand heartless are just too many guys. Hercule, Hercule, Hercule Blade. Hercule, there we go. It is true, Titans, but I'm not actually making fun. I probably sound derogatory, but I'm not meaning that. As I've said before, I think uh, Pete is more significant than you, mo most people probably give him credit for. It's just he is so oblivious he can never actually use it to any real uh, extent. If he could actually harness the power, for lack of a better word, that Pete has, he might actually be able to win this setting. But he can't, because, you know... Oh yeah, let's, let's get some Valor leveling in over here. Invisible dead bodies everywhere. Hmm. This place gives me the creeps. I'll deal with you nitwits next time. Oh. Yeah, exactly, Green. Oh no, we gotta run. The Heartless are coming. Except not at all. Could today possibly get any better? <laughs> this time, Wonder Breath is going down for good.
Yeah, Pete isn't even winded. I love it. Pete almost never actually acts defeated. He's just like, oh, I've lost again. Bye. Every single time. No, we decided to uh, make them red. I will never call you that again, Cougar. You have lost that name to me. We talked about it last time, Titans. Basically, if you look at the facts, Pete can accomplish way more than he, than he really should be able to. He's got the Wily E. Coyote effect going for him, and against him. Quick! Actually, hang on. Also, am I the only one who thought one of the ways they could have dealt with the, the Hydra situation is just walk up to every single person one by one in a shield and just kind of whisper, Hail Hydra. And depending on how they react, kill them. I don't know. Just thought I had. This can't be. No! The Colosseum! And all those people! No! Hercules you has failed. I failed. A bunch of brick and mortar. It's not your fault. I left everyone unprotected. All those people. Hades was right. I'm just a, a washout. Ah, oh, come on, champ. I didn't train you to think like that. Wonder Boy. Phil's right. This is no time to beat yourself up. I'm some hero. Just imagine all the invisible blood that is everywhere right now, guys. I mean, like, it's got we've gotta be coated in invisible blood right about now. Yeah. Alright, guys. Suppose you got room for one more. Fingers crossed for the bug! We're in. If we don't get the bug, I know a way to force him to do it. But I'm hoping for the bug. Actually, what do you guys think? Should I try for the... Because it just occurred to me, if I do the... If I go for the bug, I won't be able to force it. I won't be able to, uh, force the, uh, thing to happen. So should I go... Should I go hope for the bug, or should I actually try and do it? What do you guys think? Bam! Well, that was easy. Okay, so, um, the bug, and I wish I knew how to actually trigger it. Well, let's, we'll just see if we can actually make it happen. Oh my god. Oh my god. What do you think I'm trying to do? Oh my god. Ah. There we go. Ah, looks like we didn't get the bug. We didn't get the bug, guys. Okay, so here's the bug. You notice how he was saying it, like, non-stop just now, and like, Oh my god, get up on the Hydra's back. The bug, and I've had this happen to me twice ever, including on the PS3 version, uh, is he'll never stop saying that. The voice clip will loop for the entire rest of the match. I'm not even kidding. It will just do it forever until you defeat the Hydra. It was so bad that when my friend and I were actually fighting this guy, we actually couldn't defeat him. Or at least, I shouldn't say that, but we actually had to put the controller down because we were laughing so hard we were losing the fight. 
Oh, for just a second I thought maybe we triggered it. But no, he, he should still be saying it if he was doing it. I'm sad. No bug today, guys. It was really, really funny. I don't even have words for how funny that was. It was also insanity inducing. Please, Master! Compose yourself, please, Master! Please, Master! Please, Master! Hey, let's be honest, Sora thinking that decapitating the Hydra over and over was a good idea is very in character for him. <laughs> eh, in, a, in a more awesome way though, Jonga. And a much funnier way. Hey actress, you missed the Hydra's back. Sorry. I'm actually really sad. I was really hoping for the uh, the, the the bug on uh, on the on the stream. Um, what? I, I, <laughs> okay, so I was on the back of the Hydra's head, and it flipped up so fast the physics didn't really know how to work. So I'm up here now, on the Hydra's throat. Well, we at least got one bug, even though it's one I've never- Oh my god, look! Look, we're just staying on here. Oh, okay, there we go. Damn! Okay, now we gotta actually kill it. <laughs> Damn it. I, sh I should've just killed it. Get up on the Hydra's throat! Get up on the Hydra's throat! Get up on the Hydra's- I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Okay, so this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Clearly, since we've been chopping off its necks, chopping off all the necks is the solution here. Oh my god. Yeah, you can't shoot up. You make its heads eat each other? I don't know, Shadow. I actually don't remember. Yeah, that's, that's right. Hercules couldn't do this, but I could, because I'm awesome. I let you down. I'm just... <sighs> no use. Dude. It's not your fault. Herc. Hey, even a god would be exhausted. She's right. Give yourself a chance to rest. There won't be any games for a while anyway. Don't worry about Wonder Boy here. I'll look after him. Sora, Donald. Sora, Donald, Goofy. Goofy, I owe you big time. Um. Hey, it's no big deal. 
Also, just let us know if Hades or the Heartless start acting up. How? Take care of it. You don't have yes, communication yes, abilities yes, across yes. worlds, you moron! When did you three make Hero? Let's save that for another time. We have to hit the road. Okay. Don't be strangers. Gorsh, I hope you feel better soon, Hercules. Yeah. Yeah, I want. Oh, well, take care, you guys. Stay a little longer next time. We got some serious training to catch up on. Well, time to go. Oh, I almost forgot. The Olympus Stone. Actually, it's apparently mine. Unnecessary key, key, key cutscene. Nuclear detonation. And the world is destroyed. Yeah, I know, Leander. Except you can't hear me see, still. Yeah, you know what? This deserves a second no music for the whole... We're just sitting here doing this whole cutscene again with no music. Ah. <sighs> It was always inside the coin. You've heard of the heart of the cards. This is heart of the coins. And where is everyone else? They're dead. Beats me. They must have had some other matters to deal with. Matters? You mean they have more important affairs to attend to than my return? Damn it, Luxia. Well, see, there's this organization 13 that keeps getting in the way. Let those fools play their little game. Coming from you, Maleficent, that is a beautiful irony. Pretty much from this scene onwards, and I do mean literally, from this scene until the most recent time we see her in Recoded, Maleficent has dialed up the arrogance to 11. She has gone from being fairly arrogant and, and, and overconfident to being ridiculously arrogant and overconfident. But as I've already said, that is actually explainable, uh, most likely because of the fact that her heart was unlocked and, well, this is what she's really like. But what about that run with the Keyblade? He's been a real pain, too. Oh, has he? Very well, then. I suppose you'd best tell me what's happened during my absence. Why would he know? He's been obliviousing around. Yes, that's a word now. Yeah, Maleficent looking down at Organization 13 is kind of like a petty thief looking down at the entirety of the Black Sun organization. Oh, hmm. Now I wonder where that old album could be. Queen Minnie! It's horrible! <laughs> Something's wrong in the hall of the cornerstone! There's real sharp thorns everywhere! Oh no! No, he just basically gave her the idea to quit it. There was no magic or ideas at all. It was just, hey, Maleficent, by the way, I can manipulate you like a puppet, so I'm going to do so, and then, yeah. Oh, King Mickey, I wish you could hear me. The castle is in danger. We've got to do something soon. Donald? Goofy? Where are you? If only there was some player character who could hear my voice and, and come here next. Yay, Pirates is basically next, after this section. I, I, I just get really, really irritable at the Maleficent being resurrected thing. There's hardly any lip service paid to it, and she just basically comes back. It's like, yep, Maleficent's back. Enjoy. It's like, really? Notice there is no level to reach Disney Castle, which I think is actually, believe it or not, significant. It means the pathways to Disney Castle for the gummy ship are always open. For, you know, again, for the gummy ship, or for us, one of the two. This is your castle. 
Must be nice to be home, huh? Well? You know, something just don't feel quite right. <laughs> oh, Luxia, yeah. we're not even going to talk about it. I'm actually a little nervous, especially about the first one, which is so fast that I'm going to have trouble singing quickly enough to keep up with it. So I'm not going to do any silly voices for the first Luffy, song, because I can't. Because seriously, Finny Fun is sung very quickly. So you're about ready to have one of the most uh, ear poison songs ever stuck in your head forever, guys. If that's true, Mechanical Morgoth, why isn't that true for every other world that they've infested? That Pete specifically is infested, too. And Maleficent, in Halloween Town's case. But yeah, I'm sorry. This song gets stuck in your head in a bad way. But it's not the worst one like that. For me, the actual song in all the Kingdom Hearts series that got stuck in my head so badly that I actually had to mute the TV, and I kid you not, is um, Cinderella's in uh, Birth by Sleep. It's just bippity boppity boo, ba doo do 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 do, bippity boppity boo, da do 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 do, bippity boppity boo, and it's just that forever, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It probably doesn't help that Cinderella's world is, in my opinion, the single best place to level uh, for Terra, to for grinding out his uh, abilities. So it's um, yeah, I, I had to mute it. And then I felt, I, I was, I felt like, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one who has to mute that section. Uh, and then my friend, who was playing through this two weeks ago with me, uh, also had to mute that section. So, not just me. So we're going to be using, uh, what is, a, a, a pseudo speedrunner strat for the escort mission coming up ahead. Uh, I've only actually gotten it to work once. Because it's actually kind of tricky to get the angles right, and I've only practiced it a few times. Uh, so wish me luck when we get to that. Also, boopity boopity boop. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. This is a good song right here. Oh, there's high jump. Yay, we have high jump. Oh, at least a few thousand follow. At least. Bare minimum. You mean Xehanort, Green? Or are you specifically asking about Terranor, who, as I discussed, isn't really a separate person? You know, if there's one thing that I don't want in a Frozen world, and I'm one of those people who thinks Frozen would actually be a good fit for Kingdom Hearts, it is that song. There's no way they're going to do that well or properly. And I'll probably have to mute the game when I stream that section because of copy wrong. Oh, screw that song, Luxia. And screw that minigame that you have to do. It is mandatory to do that minigame on Ventus in order to, in order to complete the game. I hate that crap. Ah, um, Xehanort is, mo well, I, we don't actually know what Xehanort's doing exactly, but he is mo no doubt actually pushing forward his inevitable plan to restart the Keyblade War now that he is back. Hey, nobody gardens like Disney. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Hey, Lama, dude. I sure hope so, Fallout. But the reality is that the rights to Tarzan, the movie, are basically held by someone other than Disney. So they actually couldn't secure the rights for him to come back. He's actually supposed to. Uh, and, yeah, rights issues. So Tarzan will probably never be back because of that. And some of us are okay with that fact. Yes, there is, Zeiss. More to love than to hate, if I'm being honest. At least that's my opinion on it. But there is plenty to hate. Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's right. And yeah, I think that is the one I want. Oh, the movie's fine. I hate the level. So damn it. Oh, has it been lifted now? Well, I hope it isn't back in Kingdom Hearts 3, for the reasons I've already mentioned. Oh, damn it. That was a perfect opportunity to get that. Got it! And now I need to not die. Actually, yes, Paradox. That is literally why. You know what, I don't actually like these bomb enemies that much. Let's just move on. Yeah, honestly, I'm a little surprised they picked Tarzan instead of Jungle Book to begin with, but whatever. I do not understand their method of picking Disney World sometimes. I sometimes feel like it's just the ones that they happen to pick. But then again, actually, Nomura himself has gone on record saying that he is actually somewhat limited on what he can pick. So, uh, maybe it's literally a case of what they are allowed to pick, you know? Well, there's... Yes, Fallout. There's a game and a lore reason. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Uh, the game reason is obvious, so that, you know, you don't die. The lore reason is because Mickey is actually, uh, watching from the sidelines and helping out, uh, whenever he needs to, basically. Sometimes. Why would it need any of those things, Shadow? It's Disney Castle. Actually, they do have guards in Birth by Sleep, if you'll remember. The guards, the standing military of Disney Castle are brooms. Actually, I may be maxed out on Valor at this point. I'm glad you liked it, Octavia. As ever, I welcome questions about Primus. Especially as I've been doing those videos and, you know, people are trying to understand the setting a little bit better. Hey, if Yensid is actually as evil as we all think, those brooms are the harbingers right there. Wave after wave of harvest. Oh, hang on. Uh, let's see. I needed to check something. Ah, that's what I'm checking. Yep, we're maxed out. I was pretty sure level 3 is the max for the initial. So like I mentioned, you don't really have to try to max out uh, the forms early on. It's pretty simple and easy to do. It's not until you get to the, the when you get up to rank 7 thing that it takes a while to actually max out the forms. And I'll probably be doing most of that grinding off camera unless you guys can think of something to talk about while we're doing it. Uh, I'd have to think about it, Octavian, but a decent amount. Like, quite a decent amount. Hmm. Let's say... Let me think about it for a minute. I know, Leander. I've done it, too. You like how Donald and Goofy are basically just standing there? And by basically, I mean literally just standing there? What do you mean, Dakota? That's a good question, Fat Squeak. We know Nomura isn't actually that big of a video game bot guy. He's much more of a movie guy. So it's entirely possible he genuinely likes having the Disney stuff in his stu in his work. So I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
By the way, Shadow, you still haven't commented on my Majora's Mask video. Yeah, the Mickey shape is a little omnip uh, omnipresent in Disney Castle. Hey, Spirit of Memory. Okay. Okay, so in gameplay, uh, the forums obviously they give you you know more power, but as as I've already discussed, that's not really all that useful. Uh, what they do do is every so often each form, basically after you level up the forms, and level one gives you a useless ability. This is true for all the forms. Level two and up gives you some kind of ability. No, I've seen no message from you, Shadow. Uh, level two and up gives you some kind of ability that is useful for Sora, even when you don't have the form equipped. For example, I now have high jump because of Valorform. I have leveled Valorform to, uh, to level 2, and or, or 3, excuse me, and that gives me high jump. Right with me so far? So, hua! Um, you notice this isn't much of a high jump. That's because I have high jump level 1. When I level it again and again and again, I'll have, I'll have I think, high jump level 3 or 4, I forget which is the max, which will now be to jump much higher. Uh, Wisdom Form gives me a dash, Master Form gives me a double jump, um, Final Form gives me the glide, and Limit Form gives me the roll. In addition to this, each form also gives you one other ability you can have, uh, which Limit Forms is actually very useful because it's the Lucky Strike thing, uh, which helps reduce grind. Uh, but it's usually a passive ability, which helps in some manner with, uh, you know, with gameplay. And that's the benefit of leveling forms. Valor Form levels one experience each time you hit something. Wisdom Form gets one experience each time you kill a Heartless. Uh, Master Form gets one experience each uh, point of uh, drive you, you collect. And Final Form gains one experience each nobody you kill. And Limit Form gives one experience each time you do successfully do a limit. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Hey, it's Pluto's thing! Your Majesty told many were back! Probably not, Fallout. Hopefully not. Unless they do it right, Your which they won't. Your Royal Highness, did you happen to summon us? Yes. Where's the king? Mm, I don't really remember Devil May Cry 2 that much, Dakota, because I hated that game. Excuse them, this is our friend Sora. I like this. <gasps> Sora! This is the first time these two have met. The king told me all about you in his letters. He said you're a very brave young man. So, do you know where he is? <sighs> yeah, I would hate to visit Disney Castle in real life. This place would bug me so much. Oh my. So those are the heartless. Don't worry. We'll take care of them. I know I can count on you, Sora. Now there's something I'd like all of you to come and see. Would you please escort me to the audience chamber? <laughs> Question for you guys. I forgot to warn everyone else in the castle about the danger. You are a we terrible sure leader, Minnie. Somewhere safe. Okay, we'll go tell them. We just gotta split up, Donald. I'll make sure that everyone knows what's going on. You know, that would make a lot of sense there. Okay, then I'll stay with the queen. Alrighty then, see you later. Uh, the audience chamber, right, ma'am? Yes, Sora. Let's be on our way. Um. So. <laughs> uh, question for you guys: Do you think Minnie has any darkness in her heart? Now I know the automatic answer is going to be, "Well, no," but if you think about it, due to the nature of this setting. Very, 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 very few beings have no darkness in them. In fact, to my knowledge, there are only eight. But... Yeah, I know, right? Oh no, I forgot my key- where did I put my keys? I forgot to ward- she is such a terrible leader, I swear to god. She's not exactly a good leader in, uh, in Birth by Sleep, either. Or Trink Drop Distance, actually, for that matter.
Yeah, that's actually an interesting point, Takoida. That is actually worth discussing. It is possible that Disney Castle is this messed up, not just not because it was designed that way, but because it's literally just this messed up of a period of uh, an area of space, an area of reality, basically. Because this is Disney Castle, aka ridiculous made carnet. So that would actually make a odd amount of sense. Either way, don't don't mistake me. I like the aesthetic of this. It is very Disney, and they did a good job with it. Uh, what I don't like is the fact that if I was ever actually here, you know, in real life, this would drive me to insanity, because my eyes like, you know, linear lines and isometric curves and things that actually make sense and are not ridiculous. Oh, I know, Leander. Really? You know, really. I mean, Pete was totally being a dick there, absolutely, but... Really? And she doesn't... She actually banishes him to the lanes in between. If you pay attention, which... Remember what's in the lanes in between? Oh, that's right. Darkness is in the lanes in between. So if it was anybody other than Pete... Well, not anybody. He probably would have collapsed into a Heartless or been consumed by the darkness. For God's Since sakes, Minnie. Sure yeah, Kemic, that's what I'm referring to. Now then, shall we? Wait, what am I being sponsored by? Other than Canada Dry! You should all drink Canada Dry, except don't. I don't actually know many people who like uh, seltzer water like I do. Oops, excuse me. Alright, so, wish me luck. I'm going to try the strat here. I actually pulled this off uh, last time I did this. Like I said, Green, uh, it's too. it's a pretty screwed up scene. Mm -hmm. Mickey wasn't there, Fallout. Mickey had no say in it. Mickey was off actually being a freaking hero. Like, Mickey actually accomplishes quite a bit in, uh, in Birth by Sleep, relatively speaking. He may fail at most of what he's trying to do, but he does accomplish a lot. Come on. Come here, Minnie. Come on. Come on. This way. Damn it. This way. Oh my gosh. I hate these enemies with a fiery passion, by the way. I really do. I've already failed at the strat. This way. I didn't even look at it, Lava. <laughs> of course, I'm, you know, I'm kind of busy. Damn it, yeah, I've already failed at the strat. Oh my god, Minnie, you are worthless and terrible. Hi, Zagoten. This way. There. This way. Eh, a halfway. Halfway success I'll take. You can get through here pretty quickly if you just uh, pick a certain path, get a little lucky with your pathing, and completely avoid all the combat. I actually agree with that mechanical Morgoth. We must kill Minnie! Hey Samurai, you are not too late for Finny's fun. Come on, give me a break. Yeah, no, we don't have any forms right now because we don't have any party members, so... And naturally, they have a super weapon that happens to expel massive amounts of light, which kills everything in the room. Because of course they do. Whoa. Ah. The room below is called the Hall Damn it, of the Samurai. Stone. Fix your internet. I know, I know, Comcast. Our castle has always been safe from worlds that are evil. Thanks to the Cornerstone of Light, which we keep down there. The Cornerstone of Light? I spit on limit form. Puh! Yeah, I like how there's one throne in this castle, despite the fact that there's apparently at least 
three members of royalty. Of course, we're not 100% sure what Daisy is, but I've always got the impression she's basically a countess. This is the castle's cherished cornerstone. Oh, but look. The thorns, they must be the work of someone very evil. I wonder what this could mean. Hello, Maleficent. Huh? Sort of. Maleficent! No way! Well, well, well. What have we here? If it isn't the wretched Keyblade holder and his pitiful lackeys. Now we're gonna deal with me! All um. in good time. <laughs> I promise you'll be able to partake of my vengeance, but you must be patient. Yes, Zygoten. One and two, respectively. What are you doing here, Maleficent? Ah, Queen Minnie. Radiant as always. I'm here on a property venture. I want this castle for my own. However, it's a bit too bright for what I have in mind. I suppose I'll just have to fill every room with my personal touch of darkness. You'd better stop right now if you know what's good for you. Is that a threat? Ooh, how frightening. <laughs> Very well. I'll stop. Just as soon as the castle belongs to me. I also love how Maleficent's big, long-term evil scheme in Kingdom Hearts 2 is to get a castle. I'm not kidding. That's her big scheme. Nothing like this has ever happened before. I looked through all the records in the library, but I couldn't find a single clue. Oh, huh? We should go ask somebody who knows lots of stuff that ain't in any book. Merlin the Russian! Yes! Oh, perfect! This scene. Merlin just might know something about this mess. <sighs> Let's ask his advice. We saw him in Hollow Bastion, right? Yeah. Let's go. Also, I like the implication that she looks at the Hollow Bastion situation like, there's no way in hell I would ever be able to defeat those people, so I'm not even going to try. Heck with that. So this is so stupid. This is so, so stupid. Okay, so we're in Disney Castle. That's like, okay, we need to go to Hollow Bastion or Radiant Garden or whatever. So, loading. Loading. Got to show this. Got to show that we're, that's where we're going. In case we missed it, because we're incredibly stupid. We can only land in one location. This is all, this, you know. So we have to land in this one location. I love this. Wow. This drives me crazy. And it's like, okay. Loading. Again. Hang on, Lexi. Hang on, hang on. We're loading. Anybody home? Merlin! The castle's in danger. <laughs> what is all that racket? Oh, I thought, oh, it's, it's you. It looks like you've uh, learned a bit since the last time I saw you. Really? Let's talk about the problem. It's magnificent. So. Where? Inside the castle? Yup, and Heartless too. Oh dear. So this is kind of ruined by the loading time problem in the PS3 version. Because we're basically supposed to already be there while Donald is still talking. But then we have this big pause, because now... Loading. And then we're just back here. In the room we just left. Hey, Z1 Joker. Perhaps I'd better just see for myself. That is just so goddamn unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <sighs> What's happening, Merlin? This is not good. In fact, I I'm afraid it's quite serious. <clears throat> I also like how Merlin clearly knows that, that they're going into the past, boy, and yet goes out of his way, goes out world. of his way to not explain Someone it to them. World is responsible for because as we've established already, oh, Merlin's a dick. I'm certain. Oh, we knew we could count on you, Merlin. 
Then we should go get him. Wait a moment. The perpetrators must be stopped, of course, but there's something else to do first. Somewhere in that world, there should be another door that's identical to this one. I believe our enemies are utilizing that door. As long as it remains open, the castle will be in grave danger. I like how the thorns are moving in the background. It's a nice touch. You must find that door, and when you do, lock it with your keyblade. Got it. You'll get down on us. And now, one more thing. Uh, you're heading into a very special world. While you're there, the nature of that world may tempt you to do something dark. Uh, you must resist that temptation at all costs. Actually, that's a good what point, Takoida. Yes, technically. You'll know soon enough. I have faith in you, my lads. I say technically because uh, Merlin has shown the capacity to summon the, the gummy ship to him. He's actually already done that in this game. So, uh, A couple things to talk about lore-wise. So, first of all, uh, these doors and the time-traveling thing at all, we need to talk about that. I'm actually going to save that for last because there's some discussion to be had on that matter. Let's talk about Merlin's abilities. So... There's two logical explanations for how Merlin can just casually teleport from world to world. Arguably three explanations. Explanation one. He's Merlin. I'm dead serious. That's, that's explanation number one. Merlin. <laughs> explanation number two. Disney Castle is a natural nexus of the Realm of Light, and therefore is a place where just about anyone could reach easier than anywhere else. This is actually showcased several other times throughout the this, this series, that people have an easier time reaching Disney Town and Disney Castle Town than anywhere else. And so it's entirely possible that he doesn't have the ability to teleport to any world at will. He can do it because it's he can go here. In other words, it's a recall, not a teleport, which is a significant difference, as I've discussed in my Fallout 4 video. Um... That's option number two, and by the way, is the option that I personally think. Uh, option number three, which, I, which as I mentioned, is kind of the technically option, uh, is that he has like some kind of other thing that enables him to go here. It basically, be, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a mix of option one and two, which I don't even actually feel like talking about because it's a stupid option. So, that's that. Um, the time travel thing. Uh, before we talk about the time travel thing, let's talk about... You see, I have three things to talk about here. I need to make note about this. So I don't forget in my stupidity. Uh, let's see here. So we've got Cornerstone. we got to talk about the time travel. we got to talk about... There we go. And we have to talk about the uh, perception thing, which I'll actually talk about first, so that I don't have to actually remind them. That's kind of what I'm thinking, yes, Dakota. Uh, uh, so, yeah, um, perception. This is actually probably the single biggest example of the perception thing I've been talking about this entire time, and we'll mention again in the future, the one that Takoya keeps, keeps yelling at me for. We're about to go into a place where we look different. By the way, I'd just like to say this is one of my favorite Disney worlds, in all seriousness. This, this place is awesome. The fact that they went to the extent that they did here, uh, adding the audio filter, completely designing the new meshes and the new animations, they really went all out on this, and it's awesome. This, the old sound effects, the lower quality audio, I love this. Uh, it's at 16 right now. What's going on? Everything's black and white. So. Deja vu? Really? Have you been here before? So, okay. They can tell they're in black and white, but otherwise they don't really notice the difference that we're noticing, and this is most exemplified here. That's Pete. Old Pete. Hey, you! See any bad guys around here? And they think it's Pete. They are incapable. Literally. Later on, there will be the two Pete's side by side. And they look completely different. And yet the, the characters are actually incapable of telling them apart from each other. This is that perception thing, like, like full tilt. This is probably, other than the Shion thing, this is probably the, the strongest moment that really emphasizes how what you are physically looking at is not necessarily what you are seeing. Um, because they literally look at Pete here and see Pete, as in modern Pete. 
yeah, you're up. Nah, I don't have time to waste on punks like you, so I guess I'll go easy on ya. Also, props to Jim Cummings for varying well, his voice acting slightly villain. with Old Pete. Who I will henceforth refer to as Old Pete to make this uh, clearly and distinct uh, from otherwise. Eh, I think that deserves a Soros dumb. Sure. Now, there is one thing I don't like about this world. Literally just the one. And the only thing I don't like about the Timeless River is the goddamn cars! Oh my god! Anyone else? Anyone else? Is that just me? By the way, this section is almost creepy because we see characters whose names I don't even remember. Uh, the, the rooster guy, uh, Maybell is here uh, somewhere. There she is. Who are not seen like elsewhere in the future, because obviously they aren't. They've kind of dropped out of things. It, it's kind of it's kind of one of those creepy where did they go kind of situations because you know they're not. Yeah, uh, let's see. I swear there was one more thing to pick up. Oh, guess not. Yes, those freaking god damned cars. Ugh. <laughs> they tried to take over the kingdom in mini no 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 because we know the kind of leadership style mini has right so they were they they were like we're going to bake a big cake for mini and Minnie's like this is the wrong flavor i'm afraid i have no choice but to banish you until you learn your lesson and unlike pete maleficent wasn't interested in saving them so they just kind of sat in the realm of darkness until they died you got some kind of bone to pick with me more than one Dems, fighting words. Huh? Not so fast. If we didn't see him here, Manau, I doubt we'll see him in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, that's right. Even getting hit causes Pete to, t to damage you. As long as you don't dodge, of course. I'm pretty sure this is a fairly similar situation, yes, Green. In all honesty. At least thematically. Who are you? You new around here? Cut the act. Notice, I'm, I'm sorry, we're gonna give another Sora is dumb. Because he still isn't picking up on this. You know, something doesn't seem quite right here. Gore's counter. You sure you're Pete? Well, of course I'm Pete. I'm the captain of the steamboat. So stop bothering me, see? So hit the road. I gotta go find the little runt what stole my boat. Gorge, maybe we made a mistake. I'm starting to think the same thing. He hasn't even called any heartless. I actually feel pretty bad for Pete in general. Sorry we attack you like that, Captain Pete. Oh yeah? Well, if you're really sorry, then go find my steamboat. Yes, sir. Actually, yes, they are, Mechanical Morgoth. Legitimately, they are that old. <laughs> if nothing else, Mickey and Pete are. Although so, uh, Donald and Goofy should be as well. Hey, Galtori. Hello, Thanatos. I thought I had a previous Thanatos in my stream, but I'm guessing you're not that one, so... Welcome to my stream. Shoutouts. Don't be a stranger. How are things? <laughs> Kingdom March for the win.
and just like a Disney World to literally just put out a window to exactly what you need to see right in front of you. Like, here, this. Have some exposition. Actually, we'll talk about that in a bit, Shazod. Uh, World of Warcraft is the one joker. I've been seeing a lot of new viewers lately. It's weird. Hey, look! There's the cornerstone of light. Oh God, Cloudy! Star Destroyer, heartless guys. What's going on? Everything's black and white. So let's talk about the cornerstone of light while we're here, shall we? Really? Have you been here before? Could be Deutsch. I doubt it, though. Um, actually, I absolutely agree, Green. I was going to talk about that, but you, you, you got there before I did. Basically, I think this is another example of the self-fulfilling uh, destiny trap uh, that we already... Uh, I know, Zeiss, how dare they? Um, oh, we're doing retails in one joker. Absolutely retail. Holy crap, screw private servers. Um, <laughs> there's too many issues with that. Um... So, yeah, um, as we've already established, uh, Xehanort manipulates himself deliberately, intentionally, in order to ensure that his younger self does what his older self needs him to do, which really says a lot about Xehanort's mindset, when you're willing to manipulate your younger self. That's just insane. Um, Pete, in my opinion, unintentionally does the same thing here. He actually causes his younger self to act in a way that will lead to what his older self ends up doing. Which leads to him basically becoming more of a bad egg. Because if you notice, old Pete here is actually a pretty decent guy. He's only rude like once, maybe twice. For the rest of the time, he's totally chill. Everything's fine. He is certainly different than even the rude, if not antagonistic Pete that is in Birth by Sleep. By the way, for the record, I absolutely think Minnie's overreaction in Birth by Sleep was way too much of an overreaction. It was a little ridiculous, uh, in my opinion, what she uh, what she did to him. Uh, yeah, basically another stable time loop. Uh, because this is actual time travel. This is not a uh, illusion or a reflection or whatever. This is actually what happened in the past. And we are actually altering, or as I like to say, completing uh, history here. Oh, at least 50 years, Thanatos, is, is the time I, I tend to estimate. But it's kind of hard to say exactly because there's there's too little information on it. Oh my god. Ah, let me move. Holy crap. And, of course, Mickey there. Oh. Oh? Oh, so one of the other things I wanted to talk about a little bit is uh, that Mickey is not the king back here, but he is by Birth by Sleep's time. I actually want to discuss that. I think we'll actually save that discussion for Birth by Sleep's uh, era, though. So I need to make a note to remember to talk about that later. You absolute idiot. You've managed to fail at everything. And what's more, you foolishly thought you could take my place while I was away. Well, as of now, you're finished. Mark my words, there'll be no place for you when our time comes. That is correct, Z Z one Joker. I wouldn't want to, anyways, if I'm being blunt. Useless imbecile. But, but, but I... Uh... I wonder who she could be talking to there. I'm going to go ahead and call that another Sora is dumb. Because they don't immediately pick up that that's Maleficent talking, talking to present Pete. I mean, seriously? Seriously? Uh, now, some people use that exact... Ah! Uh, some people use that exact scene as evidence that Maleficent doesn't actually care about Pete. Which, as I've already said, I disagree. I think Malefic Maleficent and Pete do have an actual uh, 
connection, some real loyalty, some real friendship. Damn it, Spirit of Memory! Um, apparently I am a dancing monkey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ha, ha, ha. We are almost at the highest that I set that donation incentive to. And that probably gives away what the number I had in mind was. Thank you very much, Spirit of Memory. Um, but yeah, some people point that to that as her being terrible. All I gotta say to that is, have you ever had a close friend you've ever gotten really pissed off at? Because I have. And afterwards, after you settle the situation, or after you talk it out, or after you cool down a bit, it's over. You're still best friends. You're still close to each other, right? So, you know, just... That's just that's just my take on that. I'm not saying I'm necessarily right or wrong. It's just that's my perspective on it. Fire! Come on! So this is my least favorite of these, and it's mostly because of the freaking cars. <sighs> you know what? If I'm capable, I will try to dance just for you guys while I'm doing it. Y'all are evil. Ah! Damn it, Zoo Joker! What the hell, man? No! No! Ah! Except there's no cars yet. Where the hell are the cars? Are there not cars in the first time through here? There they are! Oh, I hate the cars! So, let's explain why I hate the cars, legitimately, from a game design perspective for a second. You have an enemy that hits like a truck, first of all. No pun intended. And, in addition to that, they actually just flat out go invincible for huge periods of time and do nothing but very quickly attack the enemy, the, the, you know, the player character, you. So, unless you're actually paying attention to them while they're doing it, they're gonna beat the crap out of you. And notice how long they keep that invincibility phase? Yeah. And they go right back into it uh, after only about, I think, six seconds of being out of it. So, yeah. They're just dick enemies, is what I like to call those. Because they're dicks. Oh my god. I need to pay a little bit more attention. And of course, it's very easy to lose track of what any given car is doing when there's multiple other enemies, which they almost always are. Oh, and while we're on this subject, when you have multiple cars at once, you have this situation going on. Oh, damn it, stop hitting the building. Oh my god! Hang on. <laughs> Okay, so now let's check those donations here. Damn it. You, you two both suck. Thank you very much, Zoe and Joker, for the donations. Zeiss, I'm not thanking you. Well, that takes care of that. Hey! Someone needs to donate $3. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't do that. Oh, for crying out loud. She didn't have to go and say that. Okay, I might have messed up every now and then, but I'm a lot more things than useless. Yeah, the Cavern of Remembrance oh, cars are pretty now. horrifying. Oh, I miss those good old days. What I wouldn't give to go back in time. What I wouldn't give. <laughs> So the door just appears here. Notice it actually has Pete's symbol on it, too. Hey, I think that's my... Yeah, we had a second donation incentive, Zero. It, it's gone. Samurai kind of nuked that one. So I'm locked in for trying all of the optionals and doing my damnedest to beat all the optionals in the whole series. Damn it, say one joker. I didn't... Damn it, dude. 
404. Now, no one donate ever again. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, right, right. Finny Fun is not found. So for this exact dollar count, we're not going to be doing the singing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is probably my favorite of these sections, by the way, right here. Or do you think maybe we got bigger? Hey, look at the toy cannons. What's he saying? He's not saying anything. They didn't talk back in the day. He didn't talk back in the day, I should say. Don't you dare, psychotic. Oh my god, get back here. Yeah, aren't all the Timeless River Heartless adorable? Ah, uh, yes, Spirit of Memory. We will be dancing along to Finny Fun. And all the other songs. Gosh darn it. Ah! What the hell? That is actually legitimately what what uh, Sora is probably thinking in character, Green. Oh, these heartless are so cute! Stab, stab, stab. Except he doesn't stab; he bludgeons. But you get my point. Don't do it, not so well. I think we're at 405 at the moment. I think. Ah! Stop that! Hey, Meat Fist. Alright, let's see what uh, Samurai just did here. Wait, I died? <laughs> ah, damn it, Samurai. Fine, fine, fine. We are no longer unfound. There we go. Psychotic, don't do that. <laughs> no, we're actually doing Finny Fun uh, next, actually. Yeah, I had to refresh the page again. Sorry, guys. I don't think anybody wants to miss Finny Fun. I'm sincerely thinking about actually recording that section on a completely separate file just so I can upload just that before the rest of the ser the lore run goes live. Because at the current rate of uh, progression, the Kingdom Hearts lore won't go live until mid-February. So, actually, I'm pretty sure that's literally correct. The Palpatine Opera, which is the only part of that lore I actually saved. Ah, damn it, people! Man, 
I told you guys to stop. Ugh. Damn it, Final Cloud. Why am I a monkey all of a sudden? Okay. Lip, lip, lip. Uh, we're doing a Kingdom Key it challenge, Lava. To the past. Such as yeah, it is. It was the strangest thing. Stop gawking. And start thinking of a way we can use it to our advantage. Okay. Now, perhaps I could give you one more chance to redeem yourself. I do too, Follow. Oh, thank you, thank you. You can count on me. So what do I do? Patience, my dear. Ah! Well, if it isn't the cornerstone of life. Hmm. Now we can take the, the castle from those fools, but we'll have to proceed with the utmost of care. <laughs> I gotta link the image that that uh, that Z1 Joker linked in that donation comment. You ready for this? Hang on, let me adjust this really quick here. The door is the other thing, big thing I want to talk about for this section. Oh, by the way, they still haven't figured out that they're in the past. Sora is dumb! They still haven't figured out that they're in the past, even though it has literally been said flat out that they're in the past, until Goofy is like, oh, by the way, we're in the past. So, Gorsh. <sighs> Who'd want to change the future anyways? Ha 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 foreshadowing. Oh, you're right, Laifu. I don't even... God, my... I'm terrible. You're absolutely right. We're actually at 420 here. Oops. Quick, someone donate! Get it off 420. Um... I thought Goofy was a dog. I'm not sure. He's a, uh... He's a Disney character, that's what he is. No, no. I'm not doing that live on a stream. That would t make this take about three times as long. Maybe longer. Thanks for the assist, Mickey. Thanks, Your Majesty. I've actually discussed, what is it, five reasons why Sora is dumb already. You know, legitimate and logical reasons for him to be, yeah, the dumbs. Probably not at this point, Samurai. I mean, I'd like to say, sure, but you have no idea how large my backlog is for games. And that's just for the show, never mind stuff I just want to do for myself. So in Reality Land, no. I don't have the time to devote to anything, like, just for myself in general right now. And if I did, I'd want to focus more on my music, my writing, or my speedrunning. Actually, believe it or not, we have not had an anti-form yet, which is probably the best luck I've had for anti-form so far. Usually my luck with anti-form is I get an anti-form very, very quickly, and yeah. I try, Luxia. I try to make it entertaining. I try to make it enjoyable. How do you like that? 
Yeah, like I said, psychotic. I've usually had at least a couple by this point. Hey, look! I'm amazed I haven't had any so far. Watch, watch how long it'll take me to get final form. Listen well. On the other side of this portal, oh, there are about insane. to begin Samurai. construction on that wretched castle. But until then, their treasured cornerstone of light lies unguarded, with all of its power still contained. The cornerstone of light? Yes. That cursed sphere is the very thing that prevents us from entering the castle. Oh. You know what must oh. be done? I love that. Uh, oh. Go then. Time to prove uh, your worth. You know what must be done? Fail me uh. again. <laughs> I love it. So I think now is a good time to finally talk about the time travel thing and the cornerstone of light thing. Again. And maybe I might actually get samurai with this one. Maybe. That's Probably it. not though. I just gotta smash that cornerstone to smithereens. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a dog too, by the way. Uh, but first, I gotta go get my own vote back. That is so Pete. I'm gonna win by altering history, but first my boat. Also, once again, in all seriousness, this is legitimately hi uh, hinting, uh, foreshadowing for what Xehanort's going to be doing in the future. Remember, Xehanort deliberately and intentionally manipulated his younger self in order to cause the events of his life to happen. Which, I just, every time I say that, it blows my mind just a little bit. Pete is going to unintentionally go back and manipulate his younger self, because screw his younger self, I'm the modern self and I'm the one that matters. It's just the stupidity there. And of course, Goofy's the one who picks up on the fact that that wasn't Pete. At least not old Pete. Now notice how his appearance doesn't change here. <laughs> now, that castle's as good as ours. now you could say that that is a lore significance. The cornerstone's gone. They're gonna fill the castle with darkness. We gotta hurry. Actually, no, you don't. You've got like 50 years to figure this out. No way, small fry. I finally found a pipsqueak what stole my steamboat. Why, I'm the you. Right, me. No, no one was me. I'm just somebody who looks like me. Oh, which is it? Sora is dumb! Oh my god, that deserves two Sora is dumbs. Two! Seriously, how are you that stupid, Sora? Which one is it? Oh my god, it's not totally apparent. Even ignoring the perception thing, their dialogue makes it ridiculously likely and possible. I'm using the wrong words. It makes it incredibly easy to figure out which one's which. I mean, for god's sakes. I... I got nothing. Let's talk about time travel. So... First, let's talk about the Cornerstone of Light. What is the Cornerstone of Light, exactly? Uh, <laughs> I used to break with... Um, Chemic? Or not Chemic, excuse me, Deutsch. Can you tell which one's which? Um, so this is time travel, as we've already established. This is actually time travel, not... Ah! Not so one choker. What, what are you linking here? Zoom on Joker. Whoops. Alright, listen to me, you nice. What is this from? Zoon uh Zoon. Um, 
I'm very confused by what I was looking at. Um, okay. Um, you know what? I, I need to talk about this here, so I'll kill the music just so you guys don't get tortured by it. The Cornerstone of Light is something that, uh, what do we know that it does factually, you know, it's presented in the game. It prevents uh, darkness from entering the castle proper. It prevents certain people from invading the castle. You notice how Maleficent couldn't even manifest herself inside the castle. The only thing she could do is actually uh, send a projection of herself. Um, the, uh, the Cornerstone of Light also basically maintains the Disney castle's um, unique level of uh, existence, I think is probably the word to put it. Also, it's not just the castle. It is also the entirety of this, this world, the castle town, the, the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the Disney town, all that fun stuff. It's all the same thing. So I mention this because this is just a theory, a game theory, but I think the Cornerstone of Light is a piece of the original world, the original realm. Uh, I think it is one of the two fragments that remains after everything got messed up. And it was basically pit given to these people, to one of the only denizens of the original realms. Uh, one of the only denizens who were around in the world in that ancient era before the other worlds had sprung up out of the tales and out of the, the, the light. Uh, in order to give the realm of light an anchor point. In other words, everything I've been talking about with the uh, Disney castle and Disney town actually being the nexus point and the, uh, the, the, the center confluence of travel for the entirety of the Realm of Light is deliberate in character, at least theoretically, and that the, entire, and, and that the cornerstone of light is the literal reason and purpose for that actually uh, existing and being in that manner. It would also kind of explain uh, something else I wanted to talk about, which I kind of wanted to talk about during Birth by Sleep, but this is a good time to mention it. Um, I wanted to talk about the fact that Mickey is consistently and, cons and constantly referred to as a king, and they have a fairly, you know, knightly sort of a, a arrangement and hierarchy here. And they kind of, well, everyone here, I mean, everyone in Disney Castle is frequently and regularly aware of other worlds which is unusual. Virtually no other world is aware of the fact that there are other worlds, right? Now, I've already given you my first big reason why I think that is. The Nexus thing. They are aware of the other worlds because they're the only world that is basically consistently uh, connected to the, other, to the other worlds. And that's true. As Samurai points out, uh, he is referred to as king even by people who are not actually from Disney Castle. That, I think, is significant, personally. Because... Oh, it's from Warhammer. Got it. Um, because there's really only two ways to look at this, in my opinion. Number one, he's the king of Disney Castle, and everyone is just calling him that uh, out of respect. Or two, he's the king of the Realm of Light. Most of us, I, I, forgive me for speaking for you guys, but most of the people I've theorycrafted this game on think that Mickey is, in fact, the king of the Realm of Light. Because it's Mickey, so that just makes a great deal of sense but also because of the fact that it fits with what Mickey has been doing throughout the course of the games. Namely, taking it upon himself to act as basically the guardian of the entire realm of light. Uh, especially ever since the Birth by Sleep era when he first started really getting into the Keyblade uh, and the wielding and usage thereof. Did I catch you, Samurai, with any of that, by the way? Like like the, the Cornerstone of Light thing? Probably not. <laughs> you gotta tell me, man, because that, that's like my goal with this whole lore run. Anyways... Um, the second thing, though, so let's talk about the time travel aspect and how this ties into it. I have two theories about the time travel thing. I guess I should say third, three theories. And here's the third theory because it's stupid. The third theory is um, he, uh, Pete, was like, oh, I want to go to the past. And bam, he goes to the past. That's the third theory. In the interest of fairness, even though I don't like that theory, that is actually uh, entirely possible. Because, as we've already seen, sheer force of will can accomplish things that are otherwise impossible in the Kingdom Hearts series. We've seen that since forever. Even in Kingdom Hearts 1, Beast was able to travel through the corridors of darkness on pure will and nothing else. And we've seen many, many other examples of this as well. So it's entirely possible that, that due to the morphic nature of this setting, Pete was able to do that. This is also... Uh, further, the, the, there's more evidence for this because of the fact that time travel is, is a linear line. 
in uh, in Kingdom Hearts verse. We've seen this already. We know this already. There is no multiple dimensions. There's no parallel realities. There's no um, altering time. Time doesn't get changed. Everything that ever happened always happened and always will happen. So even when you time travel, all you're doing is what already happened. Okay. So again, a very clear cut. Uh, time is a linear line uh, situation. So Pete was always going to go back in time and do the stuff he did here and cause himself to become the person he would be in the future and then go back to the present and blah, 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 right? This is, this is always how this happened, in other words, is what I'm trying to say here. And as I po and was pointed out by someone in chat, I forget who, um, it's entirely possible that, that modern Pete is not the only reason old Pete started becoming a bad apple, but also Sora, who, well, let's be honest, he's kind of a dick to him. Um, so... Now, uh, the, uh, the, that's the third theory. Um, the second theory is that the cornerstone of light actually made this happen basically for the above said reasons. In other words, the cornerstone being an aspect of the original realm or being otherwise just an, a powerful MacGuffin, whichever it is that's true, uh, was recognizing the fact that it was time for the, for, for the time points to be connected and so just connected them, made the door happen, and bam. Um... I don't know if I, I agree with that one, but it is what I, the most common theory that I hear personally is that the is that the cornerstone does it. Uh, probably because he's kind of dumb, OGB. Oh, uh, oh, how do you want me to say your name, OJ? Anyways, it probably because it, it just didn't occur to him. I mean, this was like fifty years ago. The first theory. This is a tricky one. But the idea here, and I haven't actually sat down to really think about how this would work exactly, is that Pete does actually gain the ability to, uh, well, how do I put this? That in the future, from this game's perspective, Pete will go back into the past and create this gateway into the past and then revert to his modern self. In other words... Pete, let's, so here's the time of like Kingdom Hearts 3 over here, right? Pete goes back, creates uh, the, the gateway into the past, ha having lost his body in the process of doing so, and then immediately reverts because, I mean, he's done all that he's going to do there, back into the present. That gives this Pete the ability to go back, and since the time cost has already been spayed, Pete doesn't have to actually lose his body and can still interact with the past in order to do it. And I might be like, well, what's the point of all that? The reason I like this idea is because I feel like there's greater significance to these events than we know. Maybe I'm just hopeful. Maybe I just hope there's something going on here that we can't know or don't know about. But I would like to think that something about these events and Pete completing time like this and the cornerstone being affected like this is significant for the events of the future. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but I like that theory, uh, even though yeah, I have... I have no idea what the actual purpose in doing so would be yet, and I freely admit that. Of these three, if you ask me to put a stamp on it right now, it is most likely the third theory, even though I, I like that one the least. Because it's just kind of silly, in my opinion, that Pete just randomly gains the ability to travel through freaking time. That's just silly. But again, to speak of devil's advocacy here, it is worth noting that the entire shtick of Disney in the entirety of Kingdom Hearts is silly. The ridiculous factor. I mean, look, we were just talking about that with the architecture of Disney Castle, for God's sakes. Um, so that's what I want to talk about with the time travel thing. I already talked about the cornerstone and the perception thing and the king thing. So I think I've actually talked about all that. So I'm cut up. And yay, I actually got something with Samurai. Yay. Woo. I, I win. <laughs> I can stop trying so hard. Okay, where's my controller? There it is. Ah. In one of the old cartoons, Mickey goes to commit suicide. That, that's all I have to say about that. They, they had some screwed up stuff there. I suppose that is the fourth theory, Shazad. There's no significance. I can't actually believe that personally. A, because Nomura really, really likes to go in-depth into tiny little details, and he has put a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of little attention to detail into his work. Uh, there have been many, many, many times where, where big theories have actually totally been proven to be true, and there were tiny, tiny details and hints of it the whole time. Whoops, I already did this one. Um, so, I, I don't think this is... Of all the series you could look at and say that we're reading too much into this, I don't think this is one of those. Personally. Personally. 
But in the interest of fairness, it's possible this is literally just a MacGuffin, and there's no significance to it at all. It's just suddenly passed because they wanted to include the past. Shrug. Oh, so here's a question I meant to ask you guys yesterday, and I kind of spaced it. So, we know that they're having a much better graphics engine in Kingdom Hearts 3, and that's nice. It'll look shiny. Um, how many of you... I mean, we already know they're doing Pixar CGI flicks in, uh, in Kingdom Hearts 3, because we know Big Hero 6 and Tangled are both in it. However, would any of you like to see any more real live-action stuff in Kingdom Hearts 3, in, in the vein of Pirates of the Caribbean. Keeping in mind that this presumes they do it properly, unlike Car Pirates of the Caribbean, which was terrible. That wouldn't surprise me, Thanatos, although in my honest opinion, that is still the sign of a good writer. That is still, uh, you know, good... It, it takes some skill to do that, is, is I guess what I'm trying to say, so he still gets my respect for that one. But I wouldn't be surprised by that. Oh uh, yeah, Tron is another good example of the live-action thing. Tron and Pirates of the Caribbean and Tron again have all been live-action things in Kingdom Hearts. There are actually quite a few Lump Lord, although uh, as far as modern films, there aren't that many. I'd have to think about that. Wait! Shut up! Your future's on the line, Valley. So back off and give me the vote! Again, note how he's actually doing the voice differently for the two Pete's. Because Jim Cummings is amazing. I'm sorry, that man is ear candy. I, d I don't care. He was half of what I liked about War uh, uh, Pandaria. Okay, that's a lie. I liked a lot of Pandaria. But seriously, hearing him in Pandaria was just such an awesome moment. So this is probably the most triangle the battle of like all of the boss fights in the entire game. This is a little silly. Yeah, with what time, Samurai? <laughs> Besides, I've already played Dream Drop Distance. There we go. Ramen Hood would be pretty cool. Fair enough, Samurai. I liked Pandaria. I know a lot of people complain about it, and there are good complaints to be, you know, leveled at it. But I really liked Pandaria, and I am not ashamed of that. So yeah, that was a boss fight, believe it or not. Ow! Wait, what's Stephen Fry quitting? Yes. You'll pay for this. Oh, speaking of which, I wonder if Open Office is done. Yeah. Don't I have to like uh, go grind the data battles to grind strength boost or something ridiculous like that? No, do not. Why would you install that there? We'll come back for it later. Peace in for the doorway! No, not F. E drive. Shoot. Hang on. Ah, quite interesting. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. Let's just do that. Yeah, sure. Oh, you can, Samurai. What is it you need to grind the data battles for? For Synthing? Because I know there's something that you have to go grind them to do, and it always struck me as silly. Because, I mean, by the time you're at the grind point of the data battles, what, what the hell's the point, you know? Oh my god, guys, Sora is the secret villain of the entire series! But seriously, actually, I wouldn't be too surprised if that was a thing. 
Honestly, I agree with you, Regal. Pete really did get the, the, the short end of the stick in basically every way. From himself, from Minnie. Tell which one's which. So is this Desire for All That's Lost? I know one of these songs is that one. I just can't remember which one's which. Alright, Antiform! No, wow. Still no Antiform. My counter's gotta be decently high by now. I love how he just kind of changes the curtain and then we're on a new area. That's just so wonderfully Disney and Pete. I don't know why. I, I just like Pete. I, I, I really don't know how to put it. For all the, 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 the vitriol I, I spit at the various Disney sections of Kingdom Hearts, I always like the Pete stuff. Congrats, Bregman. Uh, the reason, Lump Lord, is I don't have, like, I, I don't know what I could do exactly. I could probably research it more to figure out some kind of cheats I could use, but basically I don't have any of the information for what to edit in the save file. So, I would have to start fresh, and that's not cool. That's also why I'm not doing it a birth by sleep. Same exact problem. So yeah, I would actually be cheating if I could. Although, in fairness, this does mean I get, I get to try the optionals legitimately, even if I'm on the easiest difficulty. Agreed, Meadfist. Actually, when I was first trying to sell packs on this series, he's like, but it's got Disney in it. To which I said, yeah, but it's also got Mickey in it. And he was like, what? And I'm like, okay, let me, let me explain. <laughs> Mickey's awesome. Mickey is Yoda. It was like, oh, okay. That is true, Lump Lord. But it, it, in all honesty, this is a lore run, and I'm going to have to do some grinding in both games, and I would rather skip grinding if I can, because it's a lore run. There's really no entertainment to be gained from just watching me mulch enemies over and over and over, uh, for no purpose other than to get to the arbitrary point I need to be in order to go do the things I want to do. So what would you guys rather have? Uh, a party of protagonists you can switch between in Kingdom Hearts 3, or multiple storylines happening concurrently and you do each one, you know, in whatever order to get all the different pieces of the uh, story? Basically, yeah, yes, uh, green. No need to get, that, to get that excited, Shadow. Yeah, I'm one of the multiple storylines people, personally. I think it's a great idea, especially if executed properly. Birth by Sleeps wasn't executed perfectly, tell me but what's yeah. Been going on here? Who was that creep anyways? Hello? That creep was you from the future. Sora's dumb! God, not only is that, that's dumb and rude. That is just terrible that he would just do that. Sora, that's a secret. Secret? What kind of secret? God, oh, never mind. Sorry I put you guys through all that trouble. He even apologizes. And Donald is a dick to him over it. And to show you my appreciation, I'll let you pilot my steamboat. 
Best little craft on the river. He even gives us a I thank you. Mickey's late anyways. For God's sakes. I mean, I just point this out because Pete really was not that bad of a person before this incident. And, he, and again, even by birth by sleep's time, he's really not all that, you know, rotten. <sighs> I, I could go with that, Thanatos. Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, darkness. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of a good one. to the council seat now. Guess we should head back. Well, as long as we're here... Donald! Huh? Huh? No, 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 no. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me go! Let me go! Yeah. That would work too mechanical. Literally doing both. Favorite Keyblade. Man, I get that question all the time. Ends of the Earth. Terra's uh, final Keyblade. Now, time to be honest, guys. What happens here violates the standard rules of how time travel works in the setting. Because, as the way time travel works, as I mentioned, there's no altering time. There's no changing history. So why do the thorns appear and then disappear? What changed to make that happen? There are ways, and I've discussed this with some people, there are ways to really twist around to make this make sense. But let's be honest with ourselves. This is clearly one of the most likely situations where this is basically just a plot hole. So, I'm just going to say plot hole and move on. By George, the lads have accomplished their mission. Hooray! Let's have an acorn feast to celebrate. I don't like acorns that much, though. Welcome back. Because of your bravery, the castle is safe and protected again. Thank you so much for all you've done. Good, Good work, work, you guys! guys. Now, boys, I, I hope you didn't do anything <laughs> reckless while you were there. Like I said, Samurai, I could see a way to, to worm around and make it make sense, but it's a plot hole. Daisy, Daisy. Daisy, I'm back! Who? Daisy is Donald's very special sweetheart. Really? Because they had an artifact sending them to the past rather than just the ability to time travel at will, Fat Squeak. The ability to time travel at will is a little different. Oh, speaking of which, that's another question about uh, how um, Merlin was able to just kind of and suddenly here's a, a time portal that goes into the past. And again, the answer to that is most likely just because Merlin. You forgot about our date again. You'd better have a good excuse this time. Well, I was off saving the world, and then I got trapped in a thing for a year. Mission, but you could at least check in every once in a while. Hey, Epic Da Vinci. Also, no music. Donald? Just be a minute. Going somewhere? I trust that. <laughs> Artificial fake laugh track. Oh, look! <gasps> now to destroy the world! Now, I will say this. You remember how I mentioned there was that third... Uh, possibility, time-wise. God, did they really, Samurai? I don't even know about that. Uh, remember how I mentioned the third possibility is that Pete from the present goes back to uh, allow Pete from the... from Excuse me, Pete from the future goes back to allow Pete from the past to go back to Pete from the, pr the, from the further past? I'm saying this wrong. Hang on. Future Pete went back... Daisy, we need Donald for just... Shut up! P future Pete went back 
in order to uh, give present Pete the ability to go back to past Pete, right? Remember I mentioned that theory? And I was like, I don't understand like a reason why that would happen, but it does actually fit several pieces of the puzzle. It would also ex it would explain where these doors come from, both the one Merlin summons and the one uh, that uh, Pete himself uses. But that may be related to why the Thorn situation was happening. Maybe there was some... Uh, a, a hitherto unknown factor which was causing the thorn thing to start manifesting, even though by rules of time travel it shouldn't. In other words, some some X factor we're not aware of. Just a little longer. How and yes, Dakota, it does. Um, well, I'll be back for a dozen. Also, Julius isn't actually Pete. If you've actually re uh, watched you the worry, cartoon. Queen Minnie. We'll return. Please tell the king that we're still looking for him. I that would be funny, Regal. Think wisely. Anyways, um, yeah, Julius is either non-canon or is just Julius, who again was not Pete, was never Pete. Yay! Now we get wisdom form. Now that we've literally just left left the best place to level wisdom form in the entire game. Think wisely like I would. <laughs> what time is it? Okay. You know what's coming next, guys. You know what is about to happen. <laughs> uh, but actually, first we're gonna go do this. The very least, I'd like to get uh, the first level of dash. So here's what's going to happen, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead. And because you guys donated so, so much, uh, I'm going to give you guys an option. Okay? Option number one. And I'm going to grind a little bit while you guys vote and decide on this. Option number one, I'm going to do Finny Fun Raw. I haven't practiced for it. I, I actually genuinely meant to practice for it, and I just have not had the time. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I've been ridiculously, insanely busy with everything on top of the lower run. But I will... Uh, so option one is I go in and, you know, unpracticed. Uh, however, if I don't do what I consider to be a good enough job of doing the song, I'll do it again. And again. And again, until I feel like I do a good enough job of the song for you guys. So that's option one. Uh, repeat until good enough. Option two is I go offline, basically right now. And I watch it, and I practice it, right now, off camera. And then I come back in camera, and then do it for you that. So, practice off camera. So there's option one, and option two. Vote it up. I'm gonna get some grinding done while you guys get that vote going. So, let's talk about Wisdom Form a little bit while you guys are voting for that. Uh, wisdom Form isn't just the magic uh, thing. I really like what they did with Wisdom Form. In all honesty, uh, Wisdom Form is almost always the form I would use just for fun and for genuine cool fact- general, excuse me, cool factor. Because I really like what they did with it. You are skating around on Wisdom Form, which is cool by itself. And you don't attack, you shoot. You shoot little shots out of your, uh, out of your Keyblade. And those shots basically are death of a million cut situation because it's lots and lots and lots of attacks uh, with a lot less power than normal. Um, so that's cool, and it, and it genuinely varies up your playstyle. Uh, Valor form doesn't really vary up your playstyle that much. I mean, it, you attack much quicker, but it's that's mostly a cosmetic difference. Uh, by contrast, uh, doing the uh, wisdom form, you have to actually play differently. I like that. Um, the other thing that's cool about Wisdom Form is your spells change just a little bit. Uh, they cast faster, they're stronger, and they also do... Uh, they, they have slightly different effects. For example, you saw me doing Thunder, uh, which hits a larger area and uh, has the chain thunder effect going for it. Uh, yeah. And you can see how we uh, we get the like the move around thing while doing the fire ability. So we get to move while doing fire, which allows it to be much more useful. And blah 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 blah. 
Really, Samurai? Because when I was actually looking into this back uh, two weeks ago, just about everything I read, granted I didn't do any testing myself, uh, all agreed that this was actually the best spot, even still. Oh, speaking of which, I'm screwing it up. I need to hurry. Oh god, hurry! I might actually screw up here. I might have I might have taken too much time. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, I made it! Ha! <laughs> So anyways, this is the reason why most people I saw said that this was the best spot. So, uh, yeah. Because you see, instant refill on the drive forms. I can just go right back in. Not that I'm saying this isn't tedious. Wisdom form is always by far the most tedious form to level for me. Final form's easy, just because you're going to be doing that while regularly leveling anyways. Um... Valor form and limit form. Uh, oh, I guess that's true. Samurai. Uh, final, uh, fi uh, not final form. Um, limit form and master form were both fairly simple. And um, excuse me, limit form and valor form. God, uh, I did. I both did both of those on uh, Lexius's uh, mushroom. And of course, uh, master form is ridiculously easy thanks to the cavern of remembrance. So, yeah. Oh. Ah, that's not the one I wanted. That's the that's the uh, the first level up, the one I don't care about at all. I'm not leveling at all three wish. I'm just grinding a little bit while you guys vote. Servit. Don't you need to do the trick where you do it before you walk into the cutscene, Samurai? Does it even work in that? Because I remember, distinctly remember, thinking, you know, oh man, it would be awesome if I had uh, Wisdom Form here. Oh, Limit Form doesn't require anyone else. Right, right, I'm stupid. Well, Three Wishes, you're about to see, uh, see lots and lots of Atlantica. Smile. Anyways, yeah, I hate, I hate grinding Wisdom Form. I absolutely despise grinding Wisdom Form. It is by, by far and by wide my least favorite form to grind. I absolutely despise it. It is so damn boring. All the other ones I don't mind as much. This one's just, ugh. Really? It doesn't help that it feels like they didn't balance it properly. By which I mean, if I'm going full tilt on leveling Valor Form, it takes, we'll say, X amount of time. Uh, Master Form takes about X amount of time. Uh, final Form takes like X plus 2 amount of time, but it's Final Form, and again, uh, it's, you know, we're leveling other stuff, crafting and whatnot as well, so that kind of makes sense. Wisdom takes X times 2 time. Like, it takes way too much damn time, in my opinion, to level. So it feels like the experience requirement for Wisdom Form to level should have actually been lower. At least, that's the designer in me talking. Of course, also the designer in me has been getting more and more towards anti-grind over the years, but I know that there are legitimate reasons to include grind in games, and some people enjoy a grind, and I don't want to get, come across as anti-grind again, even though I disagree with grind in games as, as a player and a designer. Uh, it does cheese filling? I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know anything about that, personally. Yeah, Final Form, you're going to be grinding all of those guys in the world that never was anyways if you're doing crafting, and if you're getting levels, because that is the leveling spot, so, yeah. It is still grind, it's just, you know, it's triple grind, and triple grind is not as bad, because, let me explain what I mean by that from a design perspective. Let's say you are playing a game, and you have to go grind money, and the only way to grind money is to go do this one activity. Hey, Javin. Um, so you have to go do this one activity to grind money. Okay. But let's say you also want to level, and the things that give you money don't really give you experience. So you have to go grind these things for money and these things for experience. Then let's say you want ability points or, you know, whatever secondary leveling option you have in the game. That requires you to do these things. Most games follow this format. You have to grind completely separate things in order to uh, level up the various things you want to level up. With me? Efficiency grind, multi-grind, is something that I don't mind anywhere near as much because, uh, at the very least, you're not grinding... 
one thing at a time three separate times. You're grinding three things at once through one grind session. And it just feels like, this is of course a psychological effect, but it feels like I'm at least being more efficient about it, and therefore I don't mind it quite as much. There we go. Oh, God, yeah, Hades' Cup. By the way, we will not be doing Hades' Cup. By the way, to make my definitions clear, because I know i got a lot of new viewers today, when I use the word grind, I'm actually using it a little bit differently than what other people mean. Uh, what I mean by the psychological effect, Lump Lord, is... Let's see I'm being stabbed in the arm. Oh, it hurts! But after having been stabbed in the arm several times, let's say someone just cuts me on the wrist a bit. The cut on the wrist is better, and therefore I am less bothered by it. Right? So, you know, that's what I mean. It's still a bad thing, but I think of it as a more positive thing than I otherwise would, because I know what worse is. Make sense? Anyways, um, grind is... Anything you don't enjoy that you have to do repetitively and functions as padding in gameplay. Let me define padding really quick. Padding is the absence of content. Padding is I'm not going getting anything story-wise. I'm not getting any fun out of it. I'm not engaging myself mentally with puzzles or level design or fun fights or whatever. It is literally just doing something repetitive and, and boring and unfun. It is pure padding. Padding and grind, in my definition, the way I use these words, are the same thing, basically, in other words. Um, I define this this way because, if you're paying attention, that means grind is dependent on the individual. What is grind for you may not be grind for me. Let me give you a direct example of this. In Final Fantasy VII, I enjoy leveling. I enjoy the combat system, I enjoy the materia system. It's fun for me. So I don't grind in FF7. I enjoy FF7. However, uh, leveling in, say, Final Fantasy III, even the DS version, I can't stand that. I only really deal with, I mean, some of the boss fights are fun, but the combat overall is just not a thing for me, even with the class system. So, leveling in that game is a grind. If Now, that being said, just doing it at all isn't a big deal. You know, if I have to go level a couple levels, that's not grind. Again, I will be grinding, and I've done this in FF3DS, if I have to sit and level for you know, a couple of days of, of off and on time, you know, spending hours and hours in that damn cave uh, trying to get my levels up so I can go take on the super optional. So that's grind. And that's why I say enforced grinding is something that I'm generally against Be in, in game design. Does that make sense? Because I feel like you're padding it out for the sake of padding it out. And, like, that's it. Alright, where are we at? What? There's no open poll? You gotta be kidding me! You gotta be kidding me, Nightbot. It was like 20 minutes ago. Okay, hang on. Let me just scroll up and see where the last tally was. There it is. 26 to 5. Up there. Uh, 8 minutes ago. So, we're doing this live. So, um... Yeah. We, it's okay, we got a little bit of time. Oh my god. I can't believe you picked that option, guys. I figured you guys would pick option two. Okay. Uh, so we still got a, a, a Star Fox section to go through. So we're gonna we're gonna do that really quick. I'm nervous now. <laughs> clearly, it's a one joker, clearly. <sighs> yeah, I gotta be honest, as much as I despise the singing sections in Atlantica, 
And I do, let's make that clear. Uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean section is much worse for me. Much, much worse. Oh, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I had a business copy of, uh, ex of Microsoft Office, thanks to my work, for a very long time. And then Microsoft changed how the license is for those works, and basically they invalidated my license unless I wanted to re renew it, which is going to be like $400. So, um, I was using Microsoft Office for basically everything, um, and I guess I should stop talking now. And now I'm using OpenOffice. Oh, it's going to be terrible, Luxia. Just terrible. I should know. <laughs> I like the music in this one. Of course, I like the music in most of these sections. They will cheese filling. They will. Don't, don't, Luxia. Just, just don't. Just, just don't. So, I want you. I know he only says it like four times. But it really, really bothers me how Jack, in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, says three or four times, however many times it is. It's, it's not as many as it feels like, but it feels like a long time, or a lot of times. He says the, I see no profit in it for me line. Like, he's just trying to drill it in. Like, that's the only character motivation that Jack Sparrow has, is profit for himself, and profit for himself, and I see no profit in it for me. So therefore, I'm not going to do it because there's no profit in it for me, Savvy! Oh my god, shut the hell up! It also doesn't help that the guy doing the impression of, uh... actor whose name I suddenly can't think of, in my opinion, does one of those problems that most people trying to do an impression of an actor does, aka they, tr they just try too hard. So it comes across as more of an impression than an actual voice. Oh yeah, oh, by the way, it's the voice actor who played Tidus who does Jack Sparrow, guys. For those of you not aware of that. Yes, but he doesn't need to constantly harp on in it, Probe. Hey Jack, why don't we go out for dinner? Oh, I see no profit in it for me. Well, guys, we should go, uh... We should go, uh, you know, Jack, why don't, why don't we get your ship back? Well, I see no profit in it for me. Jack, we're out of milk. Well, I see no profit in it for me. Oh my god, I want to smack him. I, I know, I know, he doesn't actually do it that often, but it sure feels like it. Also, you remember how I talked about in Chain of Memories, they had more lively uh, animations that were custom tailored to the scene? Uh, we have the exact opposite of that problem in this. Jack Sparrow basically has, like, one talking animation, and it's this thing I just keep doing right here. It's like, every single, just watch, every single one of his talking animations, well, like, 80% of them is, like... He did do a really good job as Obi-Wan. I actually kind of like the actor in general. I wish he had just kind of done... Oh yeah, he does He does this. You're right, I'm sorry. But I really wish he had just gone with a more natural voice rather than trying to sound like Johnny Depp. That's <laughs> right. Can I take a, prof a, a, a bathroom break, Jack? Oh, I say no profit in it for me. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. So when I was doing the lore run of this game for my friend two uh, two weeks ago, it's like two and a half weeks at this point, um, I forced him to leave the audio on for this song. And afterwards, his response was something along the lines of this. Oh, the night sky is so... Oh, God, why? Also, this is kind of weird. 
because um, Little Mermaid 1 kind of followed the movie, but kind of didn't. As in, The Little Mermaid in Kingdom Hearts 1 sort of followed the movie, but didn't really. Little Mermaid here follows the movie much more closely, but doesn't really. It's really strange. This, By the way, this is a definite no music moment. I'm gonna mute that just in case. Just in case. Because... Copy wrong. I'm, I'm getting really paranoid about this these days, guys. By the way, Tales from the Borderlands uploaded without issue, thankfully. I was worried about that. Okay, there we go. We're good, we're good. Anyways. Um, see, I find this just bizarre and weird in every single way. Because... We already saw the Little Mermaid story, at least like half of it, but now we're just gonna make. Now we're just watching another Little Mermaid story, except it's like the same story. I, A girl I'm so confused by this. Her voice. Yes, I know. I know. <sighs> I beg to differ, Prog. I swear to God, if they do Atlantica and Kingdom Hearts 3, they're going to have a lot more problems than squirrels in their brains. So, take a good look, because this, this is basically as far as it gets for playable sections of Atlantica. Which is great! That this is fantastic. Because of the fact that they actually give you a tutorial for moving around in this tiny, tiny realm. I mean, look at this place. Sora, Donald, oh, Sora, Donald, Goofy. Yeah. There. <laughs> Whoa! It's a good thing you don't have something you have to hide right now, Sora. Jeez. Think about Kyrie, man. Come on. Forget how to swim already. Oh, she's I sixteen at this guess. point, by the way. Then you boys got to practice. You follow Flounder. He show you what to do. All right. So ready for the combat Sorry, section, guys? I love this. We do. I love this, by the way. I really do. We have a tutorial for moving around in the water thing. For this one room. I mean, literally, just this one room. This, this is, it's, now it's different than it was in Kingdom Hearts 1, so I guess there's a degree of sense make there, but seriously? I... So, I love this. We're here to find Heartless, and yet there are no Heartless here. I'm going to say that again, in case you missed it. Even though Ursula is back, no explanation, by the way. Unlike Maleficent, there's not even an attempt, ever, to explain why Ursula's back. She's just back. So Ursula's just back, somehow, for, for some freaking reason. And <laughs> there's no Heartless. There's no darkness. There's no nothing, for some reason. There are, there are zero Heartless in this entire world. So they're like, we need you to sing. And you guys need me to sing, apparently. Oh. I haven't stretched my lungs in forever. About a year and a half, actually. <laughs> Ursula just finished loading. Ursula tried to, tried to do limit form for her, and it took a while. And... Oh god, I just realized I'm gonna have to do the game while singing. Oh my god. I, I can't believe this. Hey, stars of the ocean, welcome to the horror. Welcome to the nightmarish horror. I... I oh my god. I did say I danced, didn't I? I did say I danced. Hang on. If we're gonna do that, let's go ahead and chop it off here. Hang on. So 